This episode of the Kind of Funny Games cast is brought to you by Dollar Shave Club. There's no reason to use a cheap disposable razor or pay a ridiculously high price for some gimmicky, unnecessary nonsense. Make the smarter choice and join Dollar Shave Club, the key to getting a fantastic, high-quality shave at an affordable price. And right now, they're giving away a one-month trial of any of their razors for just $1. And get it, it's the Dollar Shave Club. With free shipping. So here's the deal. I've been looking good. I've been, you know, cleaning up. You know I like my beard. But you got to clean up the little uh, the, the upper side, the lower, lower side, the lower east side. It's all that stuff. There's no long-term commitments, no hidden fees, and you can cancel whenever you want. You can get your $1 trial at dollarshaveclub.com slash kinda. That's dollarshaveclub.com slash kinda. Get your shave on. That's not their actual tagline. I just feel like it should be. What's up, guys? Welcome to the first ever episode 112 of the Kind of Funny Games cast. As always, I'm Tim Geddes, joined by one half of the coolest dudes in video games, Greg Miller. Hey, how are you? And joining us for his expert insight, the producer slash seducer, yeah. Nick Scarfino. Uh, also known as the champ. What do you suppose this thing is? Did it come That's out the, of me? That looks like the top of... No, that... Well, that looks like the top of a shoelace, but I think it is one of the tops off the... the we just barbecued. I think it might be one of the oh, tops okay. One of the utensils. Did you get it out of the, you get out of the kitchen? Uh, it may have gotten stuck to my glass when I put it on the kitchen. That would that make sense. sense. Yeah, that makes perfect makes sense. A lot of sense. We did you make a joke about it. Of... You make a joke about it. I want to make very clear, of course, Colin Moriarty has left kind of funny. There's videos up. There's posts up. There's all sorts of information about this. I assume at this point you would know about that. Nick isn't here just to be like all goony and stupid like Nick gets to be sometimes. Oh, no, no. He's no. here so because I we're stuck. I thought, I thought you meant the, the one half of the coolest dudes in video games thing was a joke. No. He's still a half. He's still out there. Oh no, Colin's still, so, still, still super in the other half the, of the. Yeah, no, no, that, I was games. I was already moving on. From yeah, that. oh, there's no. Joke, Nick is though. here because for purpose. Yes. We brought Nick for purpose. This oh, week. I am yeah. great because the you first topic of, of the day is going to be yes. Greg Miller's Mass Effect Ooh. Andromeda review in progress. Indeed, and so you are a Mass Effect Ooh. fan. You can ask me intelligent questions. Yes. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. I don't, I don't play Mass Effect. Exactly. So, first off, as a fan. No, not yet. Not yet. No, 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 no. Because here's because there's a whole the table. There's a whole rigmarole. No, podcast? there's not even a rigmarole for that. There's a rigmarole of if you, ladies and gentlemen, are watching this on patreoncom slash games, Thank you for your support and getting early access to this episode. The problem is the Mass Effect review embargo lifts Monday at 12:01 a.m. So we can't put this up on Friday. Mm-hmm. So we before we we're gonna do the rigmarole, the, everything you gotta stuff. do, and then when we get ready for the Mass Effect review in progress, we gotta clip that out, and you can watch it YouTube on uh, Monday. Yeah. So get hyped about all that. And if you didn't know, this is the kind of funny games cast where each and every week we get together and talk about video games, all the things we love about them and all the, you know, criticisms and critiques that we sure. have about the industry and all that good stuff. You can get it early on patreon.com slash kind of funny games, or you can get it late on youtube.com slash kind of funny games. But if you go on Patreon, you get a whole bunch of perks. You get a whole bunch of goodies, just like my boy Salem Ghanem all Ghanem did producer of this here. Fine. Producer show, slash producer. The kind of funny games cast and also all these people these fine folk supporting this making this show thank happen you. thank you thank you for all very, your support very much we need it more than ever for everything how you guys doing i'm good how are you i'm, I'm well. good i'm a little tired yeah. yeah we had a little barbecue today we did on the yeah. kind of funny morning show. and there nothing gets you ready to go on camera like a ton of ribs and beer yeah that's I'm, really I'm, a great idea i'm feeling tired yeah a little tie tie sure little, you're all tuckered mm-hmm. out this is my been a long fifth week coffee of the day fifth that can't be correct is that real your fifth coffee of the day? It's my fourth coffee. I was going to say, well, even that's not healthy. It's not. Yeah. I didn't have any because I knew I was going to have the beer. Mm. You guys yeah. decided the day drinking, by the way, gets harder as you get older. Mm. I just want you to know that it hits you quicker and it makes you want to go to nap time a lot faster. Yeah. So you should just know this. Just understand this as you, especially when you're drinking those IPAs that just hit you right in the gut. It's that nap time. It nap is. Nap time for it's Timmy. Don't we need to have, a, a, if we had one more spare room in this, in the studio, we would have Hammers. a little, like, a little hammock. We go in there and just sleep. Like I would make it like soundproof. And stuff. Or what I always amazing. wanted was I always wanted. You remember Different Strokes? Yeah, oh yeah. Mm-hmm. The show Different Strokes. Yeah. What are you talking about? What you talking about? Yeah. What, yeah. Are talking you, about? what are you talking about? Excuse me, talking about? Willis. What are you talking about? <laughs> I hate to interrupt you, Willis, but what would you be talking about? Uh, I was like their their bunk beds that mm. weren't on top of each other. They they did like that. The you know, they made like yeah. tea. We should do that. Yeah. Um, I had bunk beds like that. Really? Oh, uh, Kevin's trying to chime in. He's been there for like 45 minutes. If you guys want hammocks, we can definitely have hammocks outside. You, sure. It's just like that. How many outside hammocks outside might not be a great idea considering no, today is I'll the get, first day no. it hasn't rained in 45 days. But we get some down comforters that are... Um, waterproof? Yeah, waterproof and sleeping bags. Boom. A boom. Done. All right. Speaking of boom. Yeah. Greg, bring it. 
All right, so here's where we got to cut you off, Patreon people. We'll be back with topic number two. Mass Effect Andromeda review in progress. Review in progress. We did this before with Zelda, mm-hmm. and we have now been milking Zelda for topic after topic. I think it's the next topic after and this And we will one. continue in the show with Nick's impressions of Zelda. Exactly. The Mass Effect thing is uh, the exact same boat as Zelda, where we got it. We were at PAX East. It rolled in during PAX East, so then I started it Monday night, but it's been a hell of a week, and so I've only been going. Uh, I've put in, th- for you at home wondering, I've put in three solid nights of Mass Effect. So for being conservative, we'll say six hours. I okay, would me- venture sure. probably more towards eight, something like that. Um, I'll give you a seven. A solid You'll give me seven. a solid seven? Thank you very much. Too much water, seven. Um, the thing about Mass Effect Andromeda is this. It was night three that hooked me. And that I have a feeling the way I, you know, because I, I I don't rehearse, but I wanted to get my thought. I'm in the shower today. Shower and porty down here. Shower me up here. I'm in the shower with my dog. Shower with you. No, I wish that'd be awesome. It'd be amazing. <laughs> uh, I'm in there trying to collect my thoughts. <laughs> and the more I felt like I talked in my head about Mass Effect Andromeda, it sounded negative. And it's one of those that I don't think it is. I'm enjoying this game. I just think the bar for Mass Effect is so high, and that's the problem. Mm. Um, We're recording this on Thursday. Mm -hmm. March 16th. Thank you very much. This is the day that early access has gone live, so you're seeing all of these different posts on uh, Instagram and Twitter and YouTube right now of people making fun of the lack of facial animations, the weird crab walk you'll get sometimes, blah, 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 blah. All of that is true. Uh, I was surprised by that. Of course, I went and did that preview event and did a preview here on the Gamescast, and I left that preview event super stoked, and I still am. Very, Mm -hmm. I mean, especially after last night. I think part of the reason night one didn't, like, knock it out of the park for me was that I was, again, playing what I already played. That's always so hard Mm -hmm. to come into, all right, cool, like, this game was cool when I played the first time, but I know what's about to happen with, you know, Scott Ryder. I know who this person is. I know what's going to happen, da-da-da. I know what the big... Turning points and Scott Ryder. movie moments. Is that, like that. is that his name? It's Scott, Scott or Sarah Ryder. Yeah, yeah. Scott or Sarah. Okay, cool. Good characters. Uh huh. Very, fa- very fond of these characters. Now, so has far. anyone made the Ryder Die joke yet with Scott Ryder? I'm sure someone on the internet has, but you can do it right now if cool. you want. Scott Ryder Dyer. <laughs> you're really blowing it Bringing up. That, I said that I brought you in for your quality. expertise, and that's what I, you're. I'm going to bring the expertise in a second, but you're still getting the shenanigans with it. Uh, so I think that might have not soured night one. But it was like, okay, I'm waiting to get through more of this. But then it was also the fact of playing on PlayStation 4 is a drastically different dis- difference than I played on that PC at that event. Where, again, it doesn't look bad. I'm not playing this game like, Ugh, you know what I mean? But there is things of like, this doesn't seem like Mass Effect. This doesn't seem like oh. the kind of bullshit that you see, expect oh. to see in Mass Effect oh, of no. the faces that aren't super emotive. And like today, I thought I was crazy because I was thinking about it. I was just like, I feel... Like Mass Effect 1, 2, and 3 had better facial animations that sucked me in more, right? And I was thinking that, and I'm like, but maybe I'm doing that thing where whenever we think of a game that's come before it, we're like, you know, you yeah. look back and you, oh, Mario 64 Looked looks amazing. so great or whatever, and you play, and you're like, oh, shit, this did not hold up. And then there was somebody on uh, a YouTube video that I put in, I think the Polygon article today, where they were putting it together. Everybody's like, hey, this isn't looking great, where a guy went back and compared it to one. And I was like, okay, this looks on par with like how one's human faces looked. Right. And what Polygon said, I mean, to give an out to all the criticism I'm giving, what Polygon said in their article, was Patricia, Patricia Hander, Hernandez today, said in her thing, I fully agree with, of on night one when I already knew it, and I'm like, whatever, and I'm watching, I'm like, Oof, like, yeah, Scott's face does not look that great, you know what I mean? The people he's talking to don't look that great. Now, again, not like it's low res, but just like not a motive, you know what I mean? The yeah. way that I'm like, well, hmm, that's the, it's interesting. It's the eyes and the mouth. Yeah, exactly, exactly. When they don't match up where it's like the eyes are emoting one thing and the mouth's doing another. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, this is kind of weird. But... What Patricia said in an article, I think, rings 100% true and did last night of when you're in there and you're having these great conversations and you're really interested in what these people are saying, you forgive the fact that at some point you're like, well, why does he look like that? That doesn't, you know what I mean? Like that doesn't, like there is this great dynamic that I got a glimpse of during the preview event when they jumped me way ahead and I got to see the team around like the round table of, you know, they're like uh, te- out at the Tempest planning the next mission, playing through the game this time around on my own, getting to that first time where there's a meeting or whatever. And they all kind of just walk off and he's like me meeting dismissed. Or like it was, it's funny and seeing how the characters play and how different they are. I'm already really into them and the, what their characters are and where that's going. And for me, that's what a mass effect game is. You know what I mean? It's, if, what I was talking about when Mass Effect 1 and I give Mass Effect 1 shit all the time is just the fact that I'm not the military guy. I didn't I don't like space on like 
that's always such a stupid thing to say. Colin gave me so much, so much shit for it. I don't like space in like the way that like, oh, two, you have to sell me on space. And Mass Effect 1 and the whole Spectre storyline didn't work for me and I got out. Mass Effect 2, I thought Suicide Mission, all right, I'm hooked in. Mass Effect 3, I thought was like the sequel to Mass Effect 2, I'm fine. Mm-hmm. Mass Effect Andromeda, I think the story is awesome, fascinating, and from the get-go, super in- interesting, right? Mm-hmm. Of cool you guys have left during the events of mass effect 2 which doesn't they don't say that but that's what you know you they told me at the event and you put, put it together if you really want to you know it's 600 years later you've arrived in andromeda you are waking up on your giant ship you know that has you know i think it's 200,000 20,000 other humans on it you're on the, it must be 200, 200 000. you have all the other humans on there or whatever you're waking up and now you know you're the pathfinder you need to go out and you need to find us a new home on this in in this new galaxy and that's awesome and it's like uh the gravitas of that right of like the speeches before you go out like that you know the your father who's the uh, pathfinder is giving you or stuff and all this and then the you speeches you, you end yeah totally it is and you get i in that moment i'm like yeah okay i get what's happening i understand why we're doing this i understand what we're going out there and it works on such a great level of getting planet side and you know like i talked about in the preview but then even on later on going to new planets you know when i when i'm they give me the control of the tempest and i go wherever i want and it's just like mass effect 2 right you know galaxy map zoom in on the little clusters which planet you want to go to mine for stuff as i know right, we're all right, big right. fans of but i love it getting to a new planet and be like all right cool there's a new plant i haven't seen I immediately bring up the omni tool and scan it and get the points so that i can go back and put those into research so i can then develop those weapons or that armor or whatever the hell i want it to be that mod like i it's very interesting because of course this game is going to be compared to horizon and zelda right and all these other open world Mm -hmm. rpg you know however you want to classify zelda but you know what i mean open world rpg ish and all these different things um and the fact that all three of these games i think the thing i've talked about in the reviews that i don't think i usually ever talk about is discovery and exploration and that being what this is and how each one of these games does it so differently whereas Horizon was, I got to expand this entire map and see what's going on over here. Cool. And then there's some new machines, but they're all in the same vein. Zelda is, I have no fucking idea what's over that cliff. I'm going to go check it out. And okay, cool. And then the part of the game is the walking and the gliding, whatever comes to me and fights me on the way there. And then this game is cool. I'm literally exploring, trying to save humanity, let alone like all the other races that are attached. Because there's the other arcs coming in that have the Krogan on it and have, you know, uh, you know, Mort's people on it. And so... You, you get into this thing of it all makes sense in such a great base level. And there are like, you know, I was saying it, it hooked me last night where I think the intro is awesome. I think when playing the intro, both on that PC and, and a PlayStation four, I was like, oh, this looks a little bit weirder because the PlayStation four thing again, it's like, it looks the, the facial animations look even weaker. And then it was, it's this weird thing of like movement looks really weird. I haven't had the crab walk we've seen on the internet, yeah. but I have seen what like last night I was running and I was looking over and another character was talking to me across the way. And she was like in strobe. Where it's like, bah, da, da. you know what I mean? And I'm like, you're not using a biotic. You're just walking really awkwardly. And that's not how that should be. Yeah. But whatever. You know well, what I mean? My question about the, the looks and the sure. animations of it all. So I feel like a lot of times, especially with the internet nowadays, it's the, it's a race to the headline of what's the, the funniest thing we can say about 100%. this game. And so it's like once one website, and it usually is Kotaku, has the, oh man, the animations are kind of janky. We have all these gifts. Yeah. Then it's all these gifts left and yeah. right on every site of just, oh yeah, that's happening to me too. Mm-hmm. Do you think that that kind of framed you or even going no, into it? No, and that you- was was interesting. That's why, honestly, it was one of those really refreshing moments of when we review games, and I shouldn't even say that, when we used to review games at IGN, it was very much cool. I'm sequestered for the most part. Maybe I'll talk to somebody else in the office who's playing it, but I don't, I'm the guy who's going to have this opinion. And the last few days, it's been that thing of like, does this look bad or is it me? Am I projecting what I think it should look like? Because I don't remember Mass Effect 3 and Mass Effect 2 looking like this. And that's, a, okay, maybe it is. In my, and then to get up today and look at my phone and have like all these things. Oh, okay, cool. I'm not crazy. Because that's mm-hmm. always the fear is that I was going to come here and be like, I don't think this looks that great. And everybody else is like, it's perfect. And yeah. you're like, oh, fuck. Well, I mean, but even looks aside, I feel like, the, I mean, it hasn't been a negative reception. But so far, the previews that have been coming out today seem a little bit down on the game. Sure. Uh, and I think that's because they expect so much from 100%. a new Mass Effect. Yeah. And, and I think, do you... My question to you mm-hmm. is we've had Resident Evil 7. Sure. We've had Horizon. We've had Zelda. Like so far, the games that people have been looking forward to. Persona have delivered. previews have been delivering every Persona the, in Japan has been killing right. it. Like these 40 out of 40 reviews. Great. Where do you think Mass Effect's going to lie? I think Mass Effect's going to underperform or under, under uh, rate. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Again, we're recording this before. I don't, I haven't talked to no reviewers. The only person I've talked to about this game is Britt Bromrocker, right? Who's just the biggest Mass Effect fan that there is. And she's playing it for her YouTube channel and stuff like that. 
And I think this game is going to get this is I, here. I mean, the easiest way to sell it is to, for me in a nutshell to put it right is that it's mass effect. If you like mass effect, you're going to like this game. It just doesn't feel all the time like mass effect. If mm. that makes sense. Cause even like going up to crates and getting loot, in the mm. game, which, you know, I did so many hundreds of thousands of times in Mass Effect 1, 2, and 3. Right. Like, it just doesn't feel satisfying in the way the information is presented on screen feels, I hate to say this, right? Because I know how many people worked really hard on it. It feels like a lower budget. Yeah, and it's not, like, I'm sure it's not, you know what I mean? And like, but like, when, we're, when you start compiling it of like, oh, this is a weird, I'm getting things out of a crate and this is what the inventory screen looks like. And this is weird how these faces and look. And now again, what I'm saying though, to what I'm, you know, is that I never, I can re vaguely remember what inventory and getting things out of crates in mass effect one. Well, the big, the you know, big thing the trilogy did. with one was that everyone hated the, the inventory wheel, right? Like when you had to mount weapons or powers and like that, everyone hated it. Oh right? yeah. Is that, was that, I, I bet yeah, there was that. And there was like the, the, the elevators and the, the Oh, elevators line, to the hide the loads. And yeah. Stuff, and that, yeah. and that's the big thing about it, right? Over. Yeah. yeah. Over, uh, yeah. And like for the nomads in this game, I love the nomad. Uh, it's, it's one of those. I, I saw somebody say on today on in one of the articles that it was like wonky. I don't think it's wonky. I think it controls the way you'd expect it to. It drives like the Batmobile tumbler, not the Batmobile tank. We all hate mm. like it was like, cool. Like you're struggling to get up a hill. You drop it into six wheel mode or whatever it is and go up there and you take off and beat the shit out of everything. It's great, but it's the same thing of like when I'm talking about like mass effect, the triple a RPG, right? Like I'm gunning the nomad at enemies and I hit them and there isn't the satisfying like physics of them shooting off or them. It's like I hit them and then they don't even react sometimes and they back them over and then they die. And it's just like, but this is mass effect like that. You know what I mean? Like right. that shouldn't be a thing. And I had a weird bug last night where I was driving the nomad and I'm just ding, and it's like going and then the sound kept going, but the nomad froze. And like the dust behind it was frozen too. And I was like, oh fuck, this is a hard crash. But I could still hear it when I was gunning or reversing or whatever. It was just like just frozen. The screen was frozen, but I wasn't moving, but it was still getting all the audio cues. And so like I tried to pause, I'm gonna pause, and I jumped out of the PlayStation screen, I came back in, and then it went. And it's just like, mm. huh. And there's logic problems with it I found where it's like, all right, cool. There was one of, you know, like any other game, right? Like, okay, cool, we need to get into this place. All right, great. I'm moving to that place. I'm clearing out, you know, it has my little objectives up here of kill all the, you know, the bad guys. I, I kill all the bad guys and then it still says up there, kill all the bad guys. And it's like, kill them there's, all. there's no bad guys Done. here. You know what I mean? I run around trying to get them to spawn, couldn't do it. And I was like, all right. And killed myself and came back and then killed them. And, and then, then you it, got it. You and then it got the to go guys. <gasps> dun, dun, dun. No! <laughs> it's like, they you blow your brains out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so there's been things like that where the game just does it's it's glitching, you know, on, on a, an aspect like that yeah, or so like bad. enemies, you know, like just appear behind me. I'm like, what the fuck? All right, cool. I mean, so it's interesting that, that you're saying this because, uh, you know, last month we were talking about horizon mm -hmm. and we were having similar issues with it in the conversations with people where it, they had that same vacant sure. look or it felt glitchy in the conversations mm -hmm. because it was just such a big game. And there were so many dialogue options and whatever mass effect known for it's massive, uh, scope and yeah. a lot of conversation options, all, all that type of stuff. It, at the end of the day, you, you're saying you're enjoying the story. Yeah. It has a lot of glitches and stuff. Is it fun? Yeah, 100%. And that's the thing. Now, here's what I want to say, though, is I think this is an interesting point. Sure, I'm a PlayStation fanboy, whatever. The way we talked about Horizon, right, where the, like, the woman's eyes rolled and she did that thing or whatever, and we're like, oh, man, that sucks, but that's just open world, blah, 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 right? I feel like that was the... Here's where the line of acceptance is, and you're a little bit above it or a little bit over it. Right. Whereas I feel like Mass Effect, what I've seen is below it. And that's Ooh. why I think yeah, that's reviews are going to hammer it. Because of course, this isn't the same Bioware team that made Mass Effect trilogy, right? There's changes every knows that Casey's not there, da 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 da. Like they are they're already up, they're already into the Arkham Origins area, right? Of like, we know it's not really your thing, so blah, 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 blah. So now for them to come in and have it be less than they're going to get hammered for that. And mm. that's, the, that is going to be, I, again, now we're like making predictions, which is cool that we get to do that. I know. But I, on review day on Monday, when they all pop, I think a lot of people are going to say it's unpolished, but fun. So Nick, yeah, you are, are the mass effect guy oh, in sure. quotes of, of, <laughs> of our group. Also, I should point out, I'm sorry, real quick. Po it'll be polished, but not fun. And again, six, maybe seven, eight hours in. Yeah. Maybe as I go on, it gets even better and more polished and all this different stuff. I'm talking about first sure. blush here. Are you excited about playing the game? And does this conversation 
change that at all. No, not at all. But I think that I mean, my big question was, does it feel like a Mass Effect game? And that's like looking at it, it's it, it walks the walk and talks the talk. But the question is, once I get my hands on it, is it gonna is it gonna be as immersive as that uh, as that world can be? And now, granted, I never played three; I only played two. Um, so only got up to two, I should say. Didn't play any of one. Best one. Just started with two. Jumped right into it. Kind of read some of the story and just I was because I I was I, everyone that was when everyone was playing two and I was like I don't want to play. Go back and play twenty hours of one and then have to jump into two. Um, but two is twenty hours. Just be talking to the fucking creatures on the goddamn that game. That's fair. <laughs> um, two uh, I felt was was a masterpiece though. I mean it was really a very immersive experience and it kind of is heartbreaking to me to hear that you're having some of these technical issues taken out it's, of it. And it's but that's the thing is that the game is so good. That I think uh, that it does overcome its technical hurdles. I'm just talking about from a strictly, I'm a critic, I'm reviewing sure. it, I have to put a score to it. I think they're going to knock it for all these different things. Yeah. Well, I mean, again, I don't remember specifically, and this is just my bias when it comes to sure. to, to in-game cinematic stuff, but I don't, I've don't. i never thought that any like anyone's done it specifically well, um, and I don't remember Mass Effect 2 being any better. I remember the eyes specifically being super dead, and the hair was the thing that always bothered me, so sure. I don't know if that's something that they're just, that's... That's not the priority. I mean, yeah, exactly. And you have to play the Naughty Dog but, but, games, Nick. No, no, I'm, I'm sure the Uncharted games are great. But again, I mean, that's Uncharted Four. You stuff understand? In, in he, he understands too of what yeah. a different experience that is of a linear yep. world. You oh, get to control absolutely. everything, and I get that. And that's the thing about it, where uh, they do a. It's the thing is, it feels like Mass Effect, right? But then they do so many things that they try to change it up that I don't know if they feel like Mass Effect anymore. Like there is no like for cover, you just walk up and take cover on stuff, mm. which sounds fine, but sometimes it's confusing Clunky, and weird yeah. and he's not taking how I want it to. Uh, I feel the locomotion and the animations for movement when they aren't doing like the strobe thing I'm talking about, right? Which is few and far between in my playthrough. They look better than they did before, mm -hmm. but then this time around they've added in, if you remember that E3 demo where they showed all the platforming where you're like using your rocket jump pack to jump onto these different pillars yeah. and move around. They do that and that's not done super super well that it was, is that, that thing of like for pro um ah thank conference. you the one where you boost up there on different things and stuff and you have a ch sometimes and this is it's gotten better but on night one it was very much of me trying to jump up to things and overshooting it or undershooting it and not getting where i wanted or him pulling himself off and then falling off and doing stuff like that last night i went through i think the section from the playstation 4 pro conference and if not that then a vault very similar to it and i did not have it i thought for sure this is the test didn't die. So I'm used to it now. The jetpack makes more sense to me. But it is that thing of easing you into it. What it excels at, I think, is I think Ryder's a way better character than Shepard was. More I, dimensions. Yeah, exactly. I thought Shepard was a super... I, I, I loved my femme Shep, don't get me wrong, but I never connected with her being this, like, I'm this military person, mm -hmm. and da, 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 da. And so for her to go drink with somebody or fuck somebody, it was always like... This is weird because you're not giving that softer side. Right. Whereas with Ryder, I'm playing as the male Ryder because he looks like Nathan Drake, sounds like Nathan Drake. Right. And uh, the way they've done conversations this time and gotten away from Paragon and Renegade and done all that, like being able to pick in the moment what it is, there are differences to tone to the Ryder I'm building to the way he interacts with everybody, which mm -hmm. I really enjoy. And then like, uh, you know, the mission that got me last night was, you know, I'm going around this planet. You, you go to this planet. We need to turn on the atmospheric thing to do all this different stuff. But then once we had done that, we're still on the planet. And then I got to look at the map and see all my side missions. And it started talking about the viability I was bringing back to that planet by knocking off these things because all these planets were trying to make for humanable, human life and habitable for human life and stuff like that. And so getting to then go, oh, now I see it and go do other side missions that I'm opening up whatever a new tech wing or whatever the hell it is. And that's uh, taking out the vi viability. Great. And then there was another one of like, all right, cool. Go to this place where, you know, the original colonists had come, but they all got killed. We don't know what happened to them. You go there and it was that thing of like, enemies oh my god blah 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 and it was like all right cool and i was like where are they and you walked out and there they were and like they were there they, they seemed like people were talking too soon you know what i mean like mm -hmm. they triggered at a weird spot and so then i walk out and then there's this giant fucking monster there with right and so we kill all the other guys or for most of them and then this guy's chasing me around and shooting at his weak point and trying to get around him and getting over here and then shooting the other guy and i was like while this is happening i'm like this is an awesome moment this is where they're winning me over that i was already interested in what's happening to the colonists what's happening on this planet how do i make it better and now this is happening now there's this cool unforeseen circumstance and so i stayed on the planet clearing up all the side missions i could and there's one great one that's i'm not gonna spoil for you but it's like this guy you uh, when you're on when you're back on the uh, 
not the raft is what I want to call it, but it, where the Tempest docks to the thing where everybody's staying in, right? I forget the name of it right now, but it's where everybody's supposed to be and you get there and it's not how it was supposed to be, but you suddenly start helping it out, right? They have their first murderer there, their first murder where this mm. guy, they, he, he uh, everyone's like, he clearly killed this guy. The guy says he didn't. The wife hits you up and she's like, oh, Pathfinder, can you help me? And so like, I took the mission, of course, talked to the guy. I'm like, yeah, I'll look into it later. And then it turned out I was on that planet. And so then to go around and piece together that thing, it was like, oh, okay, cool, cool, cool. And then when you inevitably get to the end of the quest where I go back in and I, re- I want to report to Tan, who's the guy who's like in charge at the moment of the whole structure or whatever. I'm talking to him, vo- voiced by a friend of the show, Kumail. Uh, I'm talking to him and eventually he's like, all right, cool. Well, this is a tough decision. Like, which one do you want to pick? And like, there's that decisive, like, here you go. Right. And I literally put the controller and I was like, fuck. This is a moral conundrum. <laughs> this is a moral conundrum of how do I deal with it? And that was like, fuck yes, this is Mass Effect. This is what right. it's all about. You know what I mean? And like, is that guy or whatever I choose here, whether I choose to, you know, do whatever with this guy, is that going to haunt me down mm. the line in right. another game, in this game, or will I never see it again? Like, that's fun. But I did sit there and I was like, fuck, what is the thing here? And that was the deal of, you know, getting to that moment, getting to do a whole bunch of shit off off the Tempest and then coming back to the Tempest and doing the, let's walk through and talk to every one of my crewmates and walk through and talk mm-hmm. to them and have the mo- moments with them and flirt with the ones I wanted to flirt with or just have a beer, or ask more about this loved one they mentioned, right? Like, I was like, yeah, okay, this is Mass Effect. Mm-hmm. This is still Mass Effect. Mm-hmm. And yeah, like, I don't, sure, is should the face animate more? Yeah, that'd be great. Does it ruin the game for me? Fuck no. You know what I mean? Like, I don't care about that. D- the combat even though I wish I could have like stick to the wall, you know, like cover and like more natural jumping and stuff like that. I love the idea of the way I've been scanning things to get the research points. You know, I made this fucking badass assault rifle last night. And I also, you know, I forget what's uh, level I am right now in the game. I want to say eight or nine, but I had already had enough points to completely max out my assault rifle tree. Cause there's so much shit to do. Of course, right. you no longer have to stick to one archetype. You can well, go put my powers in you. So like when you, so obviously in, in, when mass effect two starts, you, you pit, you get to pick whether you want to be a soldier, soldier you biotic, you all that right. jazz. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Do you not need to do that? And this is you just can, one skill. The whole thing with pathfinder is you can switch which oh, you are okay. and so then you have access to everything you can put it all in wherever you want to go with and then it, how does the there. paragon or renegade it's gone it's, it's they got gone. rid of that yeah, yeah. Totally. so the idea now is like you get to make your choices and do your thing as you go so every conversation you have you can interact differently with people and you can change the way you feel about people right because i think tan's a great example of that like he's a little bitch when you first meet him or right, whatever totally. and then later on he still is but he's like but he's kind of being smarmy and we're all on the same page. But then somebody else comes in and confronts him about some stuff. And I'm like, well, they gotta make, they're making a great point. Like I'm being fluid in the situation. I don't know if that actually is going to affect me or hurt me or if it's just all superficial stuff, mm. but it's cool. Like it is, it is good. And that's the thing where it's this weird, I hate saying it because it's one of the cliches. Craig Harris always told us never to write at IGN, but it's a mixed bag of like, I think when people talk about it, they're going to talk about this bug and that thing and this stupid thing. But I think that's, selling it short for all it does right. And again, the hope would be that when IGN, GameSpot, X, whoever reviews this, mm-hmm. they've put in the 60 hours. And so they have even better eyes for it. Whereas I'm just here like, you know, I loved the preview event, but then playing through it again, I got to see some of the wires, I think more, especially when I'm on the PlayStation 4. And now, you know what I mean? Like the long and short of it is, I'm fucking pumped to go home and play more of it tonight. I'm not going to Beauty and the Beast because, you know, I got things to play. I'd rather be playing that. Mm-hmm. And right. so I'd rather go do that. And then like, even though I'm excited for Zelda and Edmonton, I am going to miss Mass Effect and I do want to get back and see what that story is going to be. You know what I mean? Like yeah. the way it starts, this isn't a real spoiler. Don't worry. Um, you know, they're Scott and Sarah Ryder. They're twins. Um, whoever you pick to be, whether if you're Scott or you're Sarah, then the other twin, like something goes wrong with them coming out of cryo freeze. So it's one it's of those. become the fly. No, not yet. I'm, I'm hoping. Oh yeah, my maybe. God. This is a sp- it's a spoiler in the lightest sense, not a story spoiler at all, right? Right. I'm going through, I, I get to my, my uh, you know, ca- or, uh, Pathfinder's quarters, not Captain's, Pathfinder quarters, and I go through my email, right? And one of the emails in there is like, hey, Pathfinder, just a heads up, we want to test like uh, uh, what, you know, Andromeda is going to do to monkeys in space or whatever. So we have, if you could come get this creature and put it on your, uh, your, on the Tempest, right? The rules for it are pretty simple. 
don't feed it at ele- after 11 59 or, or after what it was 24 or 59 yeah, yeah, or whatever yeah. uh don't let it get near any moisture uh d- and keep it away from lights and i was like that's really funny and then it added to my quest <laughs> go get this thing and i'm like fuck yeah i'm gonna go get my space monkey or whatever oh so i go God. over there a space gremlin? i get the damn thing and i put it in there mogwai at this point space mogwai. and then it was like I all right apologize. go check it out in the temples i'm like fuck yeah and i walk over and there's this like thing it doesn't look like a mogwai but it, it's, it's just sitting there and i'm like oh man it's out of its cage that's weird <laughs> and i'm like oh i can't wait to see where this goes it's gonna be like triples all over this Can fucking you not place. Put it back in the cage. No, nah, it's just chilling out there. It's just You're sitting, a terrible it's captain. Totally You're I'm, a terrible I'm the pathfinder. There's a difference. It's fair enough. I guess. I guess. I don't know. You're still in charge <laughs> I, of the I think it's gremlins. The whole his whole rise to pathfinder, man. It's an interesting. Well, all right, but it's great. It's a great story. But I mean, is that more compelling to play than the Spectre? Like, is it, I think so because of the Spectre, there always felt like there was this, and I don't know what the, the overarching story is, but with the Spectre, there always felt like you were like this last hope. There was this over, there was this you were, you were in, you know, these crazy odds. You're not going to live, you know, mm-hmm. and and I guess the, I guess the other question I have for you is like, is there still? Well, hold that? on, let me answer that question. Sure. So the answer I think is yes, and I okay. think that they're different odds, right? Where Spectre was like, I'm out there in the front lines. That uh, you, all right, cool. You're the Pathfinder, which gives you a special whole thing to do on, but you're you are the one now that makes the calls for humanity. Humanity. We need to find a world for us to live on. Okay. So your team is going out there investigating these planets, seeing if they're viable, setting up outposts, and then bouncing off to the next one to figure out if you can do it. Is there are there consequences for the actions as far as some of the characters? Have you have you encountered that yet? Do you do you have a feeling that like if you make the wrong choices, some of these people aren't going to live to the end of the? Oh sure. I mean I don't. I mean I don't. I haven't had that. I mean this point I'm just you know building my crew or whatever. But there are loyalty missions and all that. Okay. So you figure it'll be the same way. I would imagine that two ends right. That there's going to be a big mission and I have to sign people the right roles. Otherwise, yeah, they're going to die or they won't even go with me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What was your next question? That was with the pressure. It's just a lot of pressure. Yeah. That's why it was very stressful for me because you know I have fear of missing out. Yeah. So I don't like making the wrong choice and I get decision paralysis very sure. quickly. Sure. Well, I mean yeah. that, that and that, that's the thing is I don't and I think video game choices are usually pretty black and white, right? Mm-hmm. Like I think the last choice I remember from a video game that standing out was the in Horizon when there's a sp- little bit of spoilers for Horizon. I was trying to get the trophy for you know everybody who's going to be with you at the end and there's that one guy who's like. Oh man, cool! And like, are you you ran you run over after doing all these missions, the bandit camps, and he's like, "All right, cool." And you think he makes it sound like you know he wants to hook up or something. You run over, and he's like, "All right, cool. Now let's fight to the death." And you're like, "Didn't see it coming that way." And he's like, "Do you want, you can either fight me or not fight me?" I'm like, "Well, not fight you. I want the trophy." And right. he's like, "Oh, you broke my heart because you won't fight me to the death." I'm like, "All right," but that was like in two seconds. I'm like, "I'm not gonna fight this fucker." Yeah, no, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I'm like, I want shit. the goddamn trophy. So like, for this Fair one enough. to be the one of like, fuck. Like, what do I want to do here? That's what makes me excited to go play more and go do more and have those things of what's going to happen to these people. And you will play more. I'll keep checking in. Every day this week. Oh, good point. Right there on twitch.tv slash kind of funny games every Monday at 9 a.m. No, every day. Monday through Friday. Sorry. 9 a.m. I'm doing, yeah, Kevin and I are going to play Mass Effect where he sits over there and I just have a controller. And yes. I'm, so starting today as you're watching this, this whole week, great yeah. to be doing that. So go yeah. check that out. Yeah, uh, Pacific time. So, I mean, wrap, I mean, like to wrap it up the best I can, not because we're in a great spot, right? Because. Is it out Tuesday or is it out, it's out a week from Tuesday, correct? Yeah, week from then. Yeah. Okay, cool. So like there's still you can get everybody's reviews and I'll be able to obviously feed you more information as we go off of these Twitch streams, let alone me just playing and tweeting about it. Cause yeah, like there's a lot of great here. And I and that but that's the problem of if this was a new IP and something totally different, nobody would be. You wouldn't have such a fucking standard to get yeah, to. It's a high bar, but it's Mass Effect, and it's that's the thing was where I think they are going to take it on the chin from a lot of reviewers. And when I say take it on the chin, I mean I'm not saying fucking five point five. I'm saying it's like you know eight. You yeah. know, and everybody's yeah. gonna be like, "Whoa, this isn't the matter. this wouldn't have happened if Casey Hudson was still around." It's, yeah, it's like yeah. that's not fair and all these different things, but. I'm super into it. I can't wait to play more. I think the story is really interesting. I think the characters are really interesting. I'm excited. I'm still picking who do I want my girlfriend to be? Mm-hmm. What do I want to do here? You know, yeah, there's some boy. interesting stuff. Yeah. And can you, you have it. sex with more than one person? I, well, I mean, theoretically, remember, and I'm, I'm assuming you're a pathfinder, pl- so you got to find your way around. Whew. I, it plays by the old Pats. Mass Effect. I think somebody did put it out in some article eventually that you could yeah, have sex with more than one person in this Good. game. Good. But I'm telling you right now, I like Suvi. Suvi? Suvi. You got your eye on Suvi? Yeah. Okay. She's got a cute little accent. She's mm-hmm. up there on the bridge. Okay. I don't know if I can. I, she has the heart when I want to talk to her. So I haven't okay. get dropping the heart conversations yeah, in there. Yeah, yeah. But it's still so top level at this moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I like what's you, happening right? with her. I believe in you. I do I, like... I will say that it's completely PB. and totally unprofessional for a captain to be uh, seducing members. But I'm a pathfinder. It's a different thing. <sighs> still feel like you hold a, a certain level of authority over these people. Sure. They might feel obligated to have sex with you. I just... Uh, Gets messy. Uh, it does get messy. I agree with that. Second topic of the day. Yeah. Zelda. 
Breath of the Wild. Yeah. Yeah, we're still going to talk about it. Because people guess want what? that. Like we're it. still playing it. People are loving it. You guys are still playing it. There's so much in this. Have game. you beat it this yet? Have I have not beat, beat it, this, it yet. Let's do. Yet? Let's do the update here. Okay. I have not beat it. I am at Hyrule Castle, on my way to the final boss. Okay. So it is going down soon. Okay. Where are you at, Greg? I am 33 shrines in. Two, four, six, eight hearts. Nearly two full stamina meters, and I have five. The little things they pay the goddess. What do they call them? Triforce gems. I don't even know. Orbs. Yeah, even what do they call them? I got 17 seeds. Still have no fucking idea what to do with these the things. The Korok seeds. Haven't run into anybody asking me about those. In 2,200 rupees. Okay, cool. I've, cool. I've beaten the elephant. Beaten the elephant. One divine beast down. Yeah. Okay. Nick. Yes. What about you? Uh, I don't know. I think I'm four shrines in, and I'm probably only all told about three or three to four hours into the game. Uh, I played it on the way back from PAX East um, on the plane. It's super fun. I was very surprised because normally when I hear people talk about Nintendo games, I want uh, I just always have to take up the grain of salt because I feel like everyone that loves Nintendo gives it an extra like twenty percent love, you know. So with this one, I'm like, no, everyone's not fucking around. This game is legitimately really, really good. I'm, I'm so happy you tried it, and I'm so happy you like it. Yeah. Because my fear when you were like, oh yeah, let me, I'm gonna take the the office switch and I'm gonna jump in and play it. My concern was that I mean, I uh, don't get me wrong, I, I love it, I love Breath of the Wild, but Breath of the Wild is so like, fuck off Hands and do off. it. Go yeah, and do it. Yeah, figure yeah, it out. I thought that might be frustrating. It, it was frustrating at first. Um, and the controls were incredibly frustrating. I'm still thinking, toying around with the idea of moving my jump button because I just can't stand the fact that it's it's one of the main controls for the uh, the paraglider. And it, it, that extra second just kills me every time I jump off of anything to like to get over to it. But um, it's, it's, it's the same experience I've had with every Zelda game I've played prior to that, which is you get to it and you have to just kind of take a breath and like understand that they're almost reteaching you how to play games when mm -hmm. it comes to this stuff. Like I always talk about my like my analog to Zelda was always um, the last one I played, which I think was Spirit Tracks, but before that was Phantom, uh, the Phantom Hourglass, which was on the DS. And I hated the stylus controls to it. I hated it. Played thirty seconds of the game. I'm like this is rubbish. This is trash. But then because all of my friends around were like, dude, you got to give that another shot. Like just. Like throw out all your misconceptions about what a game's supposed to be. Throw out all the concepts of like this, like how the control mechanisms are supposed to work, and just going with an open mind. Finally, did I'm like, this is genius. This is what this this whole platform's for. Like the, the stylus. This is why don't people why don't more more people do this? I don't understand why all games don't control like this. Um, and that's similar to kind of my experience with Zelda so far, which is that I've gone in with an open mind, thinking, oh god, I'm gonna have to run around and like hunt for my own food and like cook my own steak and like this is all just gonna be a bunch of shit like you mentioned mass effect emails i'm like there's not if there's one thing that i really fucking wish they'd stop putting in games it's having to read emails because i read fucking 40 emails a day at work and i'm like the last thing i want to do is have to comb through some other person's email it gives me anxiety i don't like it at all it's like another job um but with this they they somehow managed to take all these mundane tasks like climbing rocks uh <laughs> swimming through things like just shit that like you're like, I don't know. That's what you know, pioneers did, not me. Well, they, they, they took all these tasks and they made, they, they, they took the mundane aspect out of it and gave you more of a sense of adventure and spirit with it. So it, it almost feels like you're not even playing a game. You're just kind of roaming around this world, seeing mm -hmm. what's around the next corner. And I like that. Like it does a good job of, of moving the story along just enough for me to be like, like, you know, I, I forget where I was. I was trying to get to this chest, but I don't have enough stamina. But there's just a chest, and at some point in, in the second area that you go into, it's like floating out in the middle of a Well, keep in mind, a Nick, pond. the second area you go into is the final area. You oh. start off with the Great Plateau. Right. You, go, you get off that. That's right. like the tutorial area. Right. After that, it's just the giant It's just the world. area. Yeah. So, yeah. so I mean, there's like, you know, there's all, there's, I forget what it was. I, I, I climbed up to the second tower to unlock it, to unlock the map of the area. And as I'm looking around, I look down. I'm like, "There's another cool little camp that I don't even know what that looks like, right?" And I want to go down, and I want to, yeah. So ever so, it did what it needed to do. In that, I'm still thinking about it. I'm still wanting to get back to it. Uh, when I had to turn off, when I had to put my switch away to get off the plane, I was sad. Didn't you know? Yeah. And I didn't like that. And like, it just had. It has a lot of great moments already. And I'm only there three hours into the game. You know, like I was running around, and all of a sudden, the fucking rock monster from Galaxy Quest attacked me. Uh -huh. And I was like, "What?" Where did this thing come from? And I tried. You saw me. I tried for a good thirty minutes to beat this thing, and finally, he just grabs me by the shoulder and he's like, "No, no yeah. you don't have what it takes so to, got, to you beat this thing." At you this have point. a tree branch. Get yeah. away from and this. I'm like, yeah, okay, I'll go. Um, I honestly thought I was going to hate 
Uh, one of my other big pet peeves is when you uh, your your weapons break in games. I can't yeah. stand that. It was one of the reasons why I didn't play Fallout because I was like, oh, I have a cool rifle. And it's like this is a rusty rifle. It's got one, and then it blew up in my hand. I'm like, fuck this. I'm done with this game. Yeah. yeah. Like I don't want to. I don't want to have to rebuild everything. It's similar to why I, I stay away from games like Far Cry or, or Horizon. I'm just like, I just, I don't need to fucking take the shrub and put the other shrub together to make the elixir that's going to heal me one like a quarter of a heart point. But for some reason, I just enjoy it in this game. Um, and I think that, I mean, I, I assume the game's going to get harder and harder and I can always see what's going. Um, but you, the, your criticism of it, I think, was one of the things I think is strongest, which is that I love that it doesn't hold your hand. Yeah. Because it it, 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 it it makes you want to get out there and explore more and figure it out. Granted, I climbed that fucking mountain up to the third shrine like 15 times before I realized you could fast travel to it. Um, <laughs> They tell, you, they tell you that. That's my fault for not paying attention. Sure, of course. But also, I just found myself doing these things over and over again. So I'm like, I probably burned a good two hours where a little hint would have been like, and see that, nice. That was the thing I was telling Tim about when we went to PAX East, right? First, and I've said this on a few different things, but like having, you know, I've never had a six hour flight go faster where it was playing, playing, playing. Okay, I got up to go to the bathroom and the battery's about to die. So I plug it in. Oh, I was, oh shit, we have three hours left in this flight and then play, 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 or we're landing. Yeah. And like that was great, but when we landed and I came off, I was like so dejected. And I was just like, I feel like I made no progress. I'm like, I beat the elephant, right. I beat my, I beat the divine beast, but I thought for sure I was gonna knock out like five more shrines, ten more shrines, do all this stuff. And I found like one, and yeah. then I got involved in this. And there was a thing of like where I had to ask him like, what am I missing? Because I've been running around this room for twenty minutes trying to figure out how to fucking open this door. Like what? How, why can't I get this water wheel to spin? And you're like, oh well, you can do this. You're just not thinking the right way. And that's the thing of like when the game is so open. And you can do so many things and do them in any different permutation mm -hmm. that there were. I was like, oh, I can't open this door yet, but clearly I'll do that way later. And it was totally, totally an easy thing that I was like, oh, yeah, fuck I had that. the same. I had the same issue in the third shrine or depending on how you do the shrines. I, I guess yeah. it was the third shrine. Actually, it was probably the second shrine for most people uh, where you have to move the rock. And I was like, I don't understand how to move oh, this rock. Stasis. I don't know why. Like I, I hit it with stasis and I'm like, nothing's happening to it. Yeah. And I, I missed I think some level on my subconscious remembered that there was a tip at some point that said, if you hit things while in stasis, all the power builds yeah. up. So I finally figured it out, but it took me about an hour. Like I actually, I explored that whole thing, almost beat it, and then went and did the the shrine up in the ice level and okay. the, the plateau. Um, first did that and was like, okay, I figured that out. But even that, but even that, like figuring out how to get up to the damn thing, and you're like, I don't understand. Like the, the heat meter is just one thing that it tells you one time. And you're like, mm -hmm. that's not something that I would have really paid attention to. Well, that's the brilliance of this game is Everything that you've done on the the Great Plateau, that is everything you need to know for the rest of the yeah, game. Yeah, it's a tutorial. So I it's like, but, but as you go through that, it's like it's different than other games where it's like, all right, the, you said earlier, it's like, oh, I'm sure like it gets harder as you go or whatever. The game really doesn't get harder as you go. Mm. It kind enemies of, have more hit points. And yeah, stuff like and that. things like that. But I mean, at the same time, like that just holds you back. It's not like the game gets harder as you play through because if you go to one section before another, then the enemies have lower hit points. Um, or like, okay, this area has more electricity shit going on. Sure, this sure. area has more ice shit going on uh, in terms of the enemies that you're facing. But really, you can you can kind of tackle it however you want. And all you need to know is how to use stasis, how to use magnesis or whatever the fuck it's right. called. Your two, your bombs, the water, and, the uh, bombs. Yeah, the, the water thing. It's like those tools will help you do anything in the game. Like I'm now essentially I've beaten the game like the the boss is like the only thing really left in terms of the main story mm -hmm. I'm 30 or no 40 40 something shrines in 43 I want to say Jesus I beat all four divine beasts I have a lot of the like cool fun armor and um, shit like that uh, but I'm finally going to to face the boss but I've seen a lot of what the game has to offer and it it amazes me that most of the shrines and most of the puzzles and stuff are all things that it's like yeah you can totally have done that from the beginning of the game. And I think the only shrines that would give you real issue uh, from when you first started were the ones, the test of strength. The guardians. Where you have to fight the yeah, guardians, yeah. where they really destroy you. But now I'm playing, I'm like, wow, I'm one hitting these guys. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's just because you get better weapons. But even then, you could have, in the beginning of the game, had I not went this way and went that way, I would have had a better weapon and that would have been fine. Yeah, which way do I have to go to get a better weapon? Because, uh, <laughs> I mean, there's a whole bunch of different ways. I'm and and that, that's that's what's cool. Is, uh, so it's you never so, at any point, like, I, mean, I actually don't want to spoil it for people, but like, do you ever get the weapon like well, do you so ever here, get here's the a thing. weapon think, that doesn't fucking break at this point i think we should move into spoiler conversations because like people have played this game yeah enough yeah and i spoilers I, the master sword is in the game yeah exactly <laughs> right yeah um because so is that something you have to come across or do you are you giving it so i got it last night i got the, Google that shit right now i got the master sword and the um the Hillian Hillian shield shield yeah, shield 
Um, the master sword I sought out and I sought it out based on clues and tips that every divine beast area has like kind of led to like every, every single one talks about, Oh, like there's this, this, the legendary um, sword or whatever. And it's, it's in this area. So I knew where it was and I go there and like having played other Zelda games, I kind of had an idea of, all right, it's going to be in the lost woods. All right. I'm going to need to figure out how to navigate these magical forests that like, so you don't get kicked through the entrance again, do weird shit that, yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. So I'm like, all right, cool. Um, and doing, I was like, I was very satisfied with the puzzle that they, they had to figure that out and going there. It wasn't frustrating. It was satisfying. Like many of these puzzles are, but then when I got the sword, it felt very underwhelming. Really? Like the, the moment I was like, Oh man, I wanted that to be way more epic than it was. Gotcha. Uh, and it, it was interesting that like you don't need to even do that. Like you can, I could have just went to Ganon and been fine with it. And what was even more surprising to me was the the shield. Granted, there might be that shield in a different place that is a bit more of like a holy shit. Here's the moment. Yeah, but uh, the way I got it was really just I didn't, wasn't looking for it. Really, I just went and fought some guy, and I'm like, oh shit, you dropped the shield. <laughs> And like, it's so it has it doesn't break. Is that the deal with it? So the the thing with the shield, I'm not I'm not really clear on on whether or not it breaks. I think it does. Okay. It's just it's strong. Okay. Uh, the sword you can use and it doesn't break, but it kind of you need to recharge it after a while. Okay. So it's like you you can use it for a while, and it's like the old Zelda games where when you can shoot out things like health, 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 yeah, 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 it shoots. Uh, but after a while, if you use it on normal enemies, it you have to wait, I think it's like 10 minutes or something. Gotcha. Like it felt like 10 minutes. It might've been 15, might've been five um, before you can use five it cents. again, but yeah. you can use it against any Ganon, any of the, any enemy that has the, like that gook kind of coming oh, off okay, of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can use it against them without it breaking. Interesting. So see here, my problem is this, is that I obviously love Zelda. We all love Zelda. Everyone loves Zelda. What I love about Zelda is the exploration and is going mm -hmm. to do all this stuff. Mm -hmm. But I'm I felt like on the plane that I wasted so much time. But it wasn't a waste of time because I enjoyed it and I did all that stuff. But it was that thing of like running around the village talking to people. I'm like, well, what? And then like the side quests that I had or just like, you know, the quests I have is like fucking fight the beast. You're like, all right, well, I know there's one in the desert, but I keep melting and I'm not sure how to get through that yet. And I eventually figured that out, you know, I think on the way home or whatever, if it's not there. But it's to the point that like, I really want that master sword. And like, I was looking at IGN yesterday for the news stories for the morning show. And like, they had like, here's how to get the best armor. And I was like, Oh fuck. And I clicked on that. And then it was just like a giant table of all the armor. Mm -hmm. I was like, Oh, well I thought you were going to tell me point by point. And then I was like, IGN. but do I want to know? Like, do yes, I want to know where the master I sword know. is? Well, I know. No, I want that shit thing right is, now. I, I do think that I want whatever game, free armor is going to allow me not to have to have a fucking torch every time it gets a little breezy. There, I mean, there's a whole bunch of those though. Good. And, and I think that's what's cool about the game is when you do play it, the way that it was designed, you kind of find these things out. Yeah. Like from talking to random people, it might right now, it's like, Oh, it's a bunch of shit that I don't need to know. But later you're going to be like, Oh, Oh, that conversation I had, it does have to do with this. And I, I feel like it's very natural. And, and I found myself, I saw a, an article on Kotaku. That's like, try to play this game without fast traveling as much as you do. Mm. If you know where you need to go, try just going there. Cause on the way there, you're going to find a whole bunch of shit yeah. that well, you're going to want. I'm assuming do. also at some point you get a horse, right? Yeah. There's a whole yeah, bunch yeah, of, yeah, yeah. Okay, of horses, but you don't need I to keep, use I keep I whistling for horses. shit and nothing comes to me. So. Yeah. <laughs> you just out there whistling. And no, yeah. In the down, the down D pad. It's like, shoot, shoot, like, shout oh, out, shout out to Jason Schreier. He has a great part post up on Kotaku that is not spoilery and here's what you should do if you're playing Zelda and it was one of those things of going through it and like I'm doing most of it and there's things I've never seen before I was like oh all right that's awesome and like it, like it was making that I, I saw Miles Luna tweet it yesterday and then Carbonia retweeted it. I think then I saw it in Shire's thing of like if you have a rusty sword you can throw it into the octo or whatever and they'll spit out a non rusty yeah. sword and like that's fucking cool my favorite meme going around is somebody took the the cover art of the game and they replaced Zelda with I didn't know you could do that yeah so yeah, yeah yeah Cause that's I mean, because that, and that's what I was talking. I think Alana was, or no, it was Lucy O'Brien, maybe talking to Alana last night. But Lucy, Lucy had said something to that effect, and I, I tweeted on me. She's like, "It, I'm the number of times I'm like, well, logically, this, oh fuck, this works." Like in my head, I'm like, I'm so used to video games not doing what you think they should do. Like, oh, this is how this would easily go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and like, no, I mean, not. things like, all right, you're cold, but you have a flame sword. If you have the flame sword equipped, when he puts it on his back, it keeps him warm. Coffee. Yeah, interesting like, shit like that. Whenever you think this should work, it does. Like if you see a string and you're like, I could probably cut that down somehow. Yep. If you throw a sword at it yeah. or arrow it, it's going to the first time the, I the, the, first, thing. the first shrine I got to. Yeah, that had like drawbridge up and I was like, those ropes probably should cut. Oh, they cut. Nice. That was fucking right. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Like that's I love being rewarded that way. I love doing it. Yeah. And then I, and it is the thing, though, where it's like, you know, 
well, only women can come into this uh, area or whatever, so you can't go further. And I'm like, fuck, I got to cross-dress at some point. I got to mm-hmm. get some yep. some bomb-ass girl outfit. I'm looking at every shop, and I'm like, this hair kind of looks like girl hair, and I bought it. I'm like, it's not. I'm like, no, damn it, I spent quite. rupees on that for no reason. <laughs> yeah. So, I don't I need mean, to be stealthy. I love that everyone I'm talking to, we there is no consensus on what the order is of how you're supposed to go through the yeah. Divine Beast, so that's super cool. Well, that's the thing, too. Of like, you know, I mean, I know they're in there. I've already seen one in the desert, but I've, I still don't know where the Gor- Gorons are. Still haven't run into them, like, other than the one at the water. The you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean, it's crazy because, I mean, for me, Gerudo, where the desert one, yeah. I did that last, and mm. I would swear that that is supposed to be the last one that yeah. you do. Um, I will say, to be a little bit critical of the game, like now that I've played so much more of it, mm. I still think that it is like a 10 out of 10. But uh, I do think that there's there's a lot of issues, one of them being it rains way too damn much. Mm. Um, it was cute in the beginning, but now when I'm trying to get things done, it's really annoying to have to just wait. Yep. That, 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 that was the first one to happen to me where it was the second time I needed to get the blue flame in the second place or whatever. I know you can do many orders, so who knows? But when it was, I was like, all right, great. And then I was like, oh, fuck. I looked down, I saw the rain coming. I'm like, come on, God. Oh, fuck. Yeah. And I did it. And then I just like, Kicked rocks around for a while and walked around. No, like you're climbing you can't up. walk around during the rain. You can. No, I no, need like a torch. He had a, he had a torch. So he and you can't climb. I mean, yeah, you can, but, but like you pain, start you sliding start a sliding, lot. Yeah. And like when you're trying to climb a big mountain, you're running out of stamina. It's it's not good. It's a bad look. So it, it gets kind of annoying for for that type of stuff. But that was an issue. And the other thing is, I love the pacing of this game, and I love the the divine beasts and the setup of that. I feel like it's a really good way to develop those characters and have the, like with the voice acting. So it always felt special. Like you know what you're getting into with the you meet the dude, you meet the culture of this area, you start you have like a fun kind of more gimmicky. Here's something different than, yeah. than the rest of the game. Now you're d- doing a more typical dungeon. Now here's a boss fight. Uh, but my problem is. It was so samey between the four because it's mm-hmm. um, you can do it in any order that you want that it it got kind of weird where there's there's a lot of lines of dialogue that are centered around um, like, hey, you're going to do this. And then once you like with the, I'm trying not to spoil things, but like, yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they say things that are like, hey, if you do this, then we'll do this for you. And then once you hear that four times, I'm like, I know. Yeah, like, I know I've already happen. seen your friends do it. Yeah, right? yeah. you know, um, so that got kind of it just felt. It felt wrong to me. It felt like that was kind of an oversight, and I don't know what the real solution would be, but maybe adjusting the game as it goes, like some of the dialogue mm. options would yeah. be cool. Because most of the stuff's not VO. It's all text-based shit. So. Yeah, I feel like they don't have a choice with that, though, because the, the thing is it does reward you for playing it any way you want. You ha- like That might have been the first time in some instances that people encounter that, you know? Um, you also have to just kind of make sure people do know what they're doing. So I get that. No, no, no for sure. It's just like, it, it does get, especially once Super I, when I noticed it at the third one where I was like, all right, this is kind of weird. And then once I got to the fourth, I'm like, really? But yeah. uh, again, minor complaint. Uh, but my bigger issue with the, with the divine beasts in particular is I thought the Gerudo one was a real step down. It really? wasn't like water temple ocarina status where I'm like, this is fucking annoying. But I thought the the other three are so, so brilliantly designed and every moment of them was fucking awesome. The Gerudo one has things about it that are cool. Uh, but I, it was a drag playing through it. Like playing the, the a lot of the other ones I was like, mm-hmm. There was moments I was frustrated, yeah. but whenever I figured it out, I was like, fuck yeah. With this one, I was like, I haven't figured out. It's frustrating to do. Yeah. You know, and and that's is that because good. of the control scheme or is that just because no, it's just not a fun every, boss all the, to fight? All the dungeons have like a different kind of gimmick to them, yeah. like a, a different mechanic that they add on top so of the So the dungeons mechanics. are different than shrines? Yes. Oh, interesting. I haven't yeah, got yeah, to a dungeon. Yep. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, oh, you'll know. You'll know. You'll know. Okay. But uh, it's. <laughs> you'll know. Yeah. It's, it's very <laughs> clear. Um, but anyway, again, that's just such a minor complaint because it's it's Gibson so good. And even that, even the camel one was like, all right, like it's not horrible. Wait, you get a camel? What's it? You don't get a camel, but you do. You at any camel. point get to buy and ride a camel? No, that would have taken this game up to eleven for me. You can uh, sand surf with walruses. Yes, okay. close okay. second. Yeah, and okay. close that second. shit was another one. It was really frustrating moments. Where I'm like, really, this isn't fun to control. Oh my god, I had a great time with it. I loved it. Well, you. Uh, Okay. Yeah. Yep. You know. You know more than me. There. You know more than me. Um, but anyway, that's our updated Zelda conversation. Spoilers are now stopping yeah. for anybody listening or watching or whatever. Do we have to do this? Again? Who knows? Yeah. Do nobody's paying attention. That. That, that was the no. thing where I was like, in, I, you know, as I talked about it in the Mass Effect review or whatever, that I came around now. But that having already played the beginning of Mass Effect and then playing it again that night, it was just like, I could be playing Zelda right now. I got, I got to do this. I mean, I want to play Mass Effect. I love Mass Effect. I'm excited to see where this goes, but you mm-hmm. could have been doing this. Right now, you get the choice. Yeah. Any game you want. For the rest of my life? No, just right now. Oh, Patapon, HD. 
Give me some, <laughs> where's that? Give me that pat upon. Wow, where's that okay. pat upon? Okay. Ah! Never mind. Where's Infamous? Where? What's Cole up to? All right. Third topic. Peace Walker 2. We're talking about PAX East games. Nick. Yeah. You can be dismissed if you would like. Oh, sure. Okay. Yeah, you you were here for the Mass Effect. Thanks, guys. You Thanks, everyone. Zelda. Let me know if you need me. I'll be in the next room That's doing That's a wrap guys. on Nick. Did he not play games at PAX East? Do you want to talk about it? Oh, no, I only played three. Nothing. That blew me away. Okay. Okay, then. That's the people's champ. The people's champ. Nick did did play a game at uh, PAX East, and that game was Snake, Snake Pass. Pass. Where he won the Nintendo World Championship. You're welcome, world. But you like Snake Packs, right? Snake Packs. Yeah, it's super fun. I played that, and I played a game called AB, which was a cute game that I thought was fun. A little little platformer. Not really a platformer. Oh. oh did you guys see that? Right. The, the best friend? Ob Obby? I think it's called AB. Oh, is it AB? AB, like it's a robot. That's how the, that's how the guy pronounced it. ABI AB is how you spell it. Yeah, it's ABI, but... Um, Go for it. Um, yeah, I was obviously... Mike. Mike. He's getting there. He's coming. Hold on, and Chief. shouldn't talk. Okay, oh my, my apologies. Love you. Which one of us really shouldn't talk anymore, Kevin? Oh. Jesus <laughs> um, yeah, I saw that game. It, it, it caught out of the corner of my eye as you guys were playing in the... I forget which, whose booth that was. It was the Indie Maker the booth. Indie, yeah. Uh, and it's it's a cool little game, man. It's got a great art style. Uh, it's it's very oddly reminiscent of Wally. So you're not really sure what wow. happened. Like you're, it's just a bunch of robots that are around. You're not sure what happened to the people. Um, and you have you have there's two robots that you have. It's you and your friend, and you guys walk through this world and have to kind of pop into buildings to, to puzzle solve or problem solve some of the puzzles to get actually I guess to your destination. And you're looking for something the entire time. I can't remember what. Love. I think mm. it's a bird or a cat or something. I didn't quite catch that much. I was more worried. The, the guy next to me had pretzels, and I was like, fuck, I want a pretzel so bad right now. Classic, classic. Was Sesame it one time. of the soft pretzels that we bought that were terrible? No, it was the, like it was a bag goals? of uh, like the bigger rolled golds. Mm. You know, like the cigar when you eat Oh, it, oh yeah. God, yeah, I remember being a cigar. kid. Yeah. So I was like, damn, where did you get those for one? Um, that looks cool. Uh, I wanted to play Ape Out. That oh, looks yeah. Really, really I mean, cool. Ape Out's here on my Ape, list. Ape Out, I think, is... Game I would of the show? say our game of the show. Now you're saying that. Don't forget about Emily is away too. Oh, that's true. But th I mean, that's a Did slam dunk. That? That's a slam dunk. Which one? Did you end up playing Emily was away? We watched a little bit of yeah. the, the. We don't need playing to. It. We're like, I know. As great. Emily is away, number one's best biggest fans. Tim and Greg don't need to play Emily got it. is away yeah, too. No, we watched it. 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 We'll, we'll get to that in a second. Ape out. I would say that as the kind of funny games game of the show. Game of the show. Ape out. Devolver. Because man, Devolver Digital. It's coming to PC and PS4. Yeah. And it it's essentially. Like Hotline Miami, look, it's like top, top down. down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you are a gorilla that escaped from the zoo. Yeah. Or, you, or did, is it a zoo? Oh, I don't know. I don't yeah, I guess I, see. I don't think a it's a zoo. zoo there's a lot of guns involved. There's a lot. Your armed soldiers and guards are all over the place. It's got this really uh, simplistic art style where right. the uh, the like ape and the ones we were watching was bright orange. Uh, the the guys are like silhouettes ish. The level is silhouette ish, and then like you can see like the floor is like it's very stylish. It's a lot of um, just big bold colors, like right. single yeah. flat colors, yeah, yeah, yeah. and the the soundtrack it, it's like a rolling like a freestyle jazz song, yeah. and everything you do makes music, makes drum noise, drum yeah. noises, yeah, and uh, it's kind of like yeah, someone shit. around, yeah, really you see cool. that. so yeah, you're the giant ape. You smash through the glass ever to begin the level, and then you go through, and yeah, you go through, and you kill as many guys as you can. You come up to giant steel doors, you can rip down, and then use the shield and throw it to smush dudes. There are dudes that have guns who are like the normal enemies, and there's dudes that have explosives that are like harder to do it. Uh, you know, early on enemies, they don't, they take a long time to shoot later on. They don't as much and you go through. Yeah. And so if you get hit too, then you bleed out the oranges you go. So people can kind of follow you and see, and the idea is to get from I'll always just go right. But like, mm -hmm. it's never, it's not always just a straight line to the right of the screen. It is, you know, a crazy go through this corridor, go over here, smash this glass, go over that way, blah, blah. blah. And what was cool, I thought was when you die. And also when you, I guess we'd be level more, it's more important when you die. Cause the guy in front of me who hogged it would never let me on. When he would die over and over again, it would pull out and show you the path you took through this. I think they're gen randomly generated mm -hmm. levels. The path you took and then where you died and how close you were to the exit. And so this guy kept getting close and kept getting pwned because he sucked and he should let me play. But I'm just yeah. you know, no big deal. No big deal. Dicks he out for Ape Out. Dicks out for Ape Out indeed. Ape Out was great. Uh, the love of my life. Jean Vieve St. Orange says you can play it if you the trailer is playable. The, tr the if you go YouTube trailer is playable, which doesn't make sense to me. Is that true? Or is it YouTube or is it over on Devolver? 
I mean, it must be on Devolver, but I mean, I watched it on YouTube today and it said, play this oh. trailer. Oh, okay. But I, I, it must be, maybe it's a click, you click it and it takes it over to yeah, the Yeah, you gotta, it has to go know. somewhere else, right? Yeah, know. you can't play it on YouTube. Oh, that sounds fucking weird. Bring it, it up! Really play weird. it down here, Kev. I want to see how good you can be at Ape Out. All right, down here. I'll fill time while you go. I and wrote way too. these notes about We can about talk about at, during that, that time. That oh. game looks fantastic. If you haven't mm. seen Emily is Away, Came out. Bye. It's, a, Bye. Okay. it's a game where you essentially, it took place between like 2003 and 2006, um, and you're it's on AOL. It's a messenger. Having a conversation, and like kind of you get to make choices and stuff. But no matter how you played it, it ended in the same place. Right. We did a Let's Play. You should watch it. YouTube.com slash Kind of Funny Games. If you watch it and you enjoy it, go done. buy the game. Yes, because that's what I always say. Because we love that game. We played What's it all the way through. The dev. I'm gonna check for you. I want to. I know it's he one is of, the homie. It's one of those where I know his Twitter handle, and like that's not his name. Yeah. So that game looks great. Emily's Way Two looks even better. Uh, Do you remember the t- in like 2006? You. Yeah, I remember like it was on, later. It was later. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, it, it's not just aim now. You use aim, but you can then go on Facebook. You can open up Mozilla Firefox. To, uh, to open up YouTube and YouTube and Facebook look like they did during that time and you can watch actual videos That was the coolest thing is that when he showed us. Yeah, we're going in. Okay, let's go in We're gonna you know, look I'm gonna show you what's going on here with this It's like, okay, cool Kyle and that's Kyle. what threw me off every time. Oh <laughs> I'm like that's not what his Twitter handle looks like. I always think of the Emily is away account Which is her screen name, which is at E M E R Z three five and then Kyle's is Kyle Seeley 23 So his is very Kyle on the Seeley. nose, yeah. but yeah um yeah, that was so cool. It was like having all before it was just the your AOL Instant Messenger, right? And this time it is you have the World Wide Web, but in that same Emily's Away style there. Yep. Where yeah, you click and you open Facebook, and sure enough, it had like the Leave Britney Alone video, but it had the thumbnail that was like it looked like Pixelated. it was like yeah. And I was like, so did you redo the videos? Like oh no, it links to the real video. It gives the real video the view. I'm like that's fucking awesome. What a yeah. great idea. So awesome. Suck that in. But yeah, that, in May 2017, multiple endings, multiple endings. Yeah. And if you type in Tim Gettys or uh, game over Greggy or those combinations your little buddy icon can be a kind of funny smiley. Yeah, he's, so he's that doing was a fun it, little know. thing you put in there for us Tim. How you doing? You got, oh, you got the ape or I'm sorry Tim. How you doing Kevin? How you doing? You got the ape out demo, huh? Yeah, That's you, have the deal? To, you have to install it. Oh, okay. So I don't this doesn't seem like any cool Okay mm. Hmm. Anyways, the game looks awesome. Maybe Jean-Bierre saint Ange lied to us, but I doubt it. Um, this is definitely not a indie game, but I just want to make a mention. I didn't play it, but got to see Crash. That Crash, man. Uh, insane trilogy with the, the new level, the Hang 8, which is from Crash 2. They're killing it with this game. Can't wait to fucking play it. It looks so good. I, I didn't want to wait in line and do the whole thing for this because I have a feeling they'll send us a build eventually. Okay. And um, I already played two out of three levels at PSX. So I'm like, and also I'm, I'm quite familiar. So... I want to spend more time playing other things. Uh, was there any other game that you... I got a whole bunch, yeah. Good. Not a whole bunch, but I got some. Semblance. This is the one we stopped at. We got a very short demo from, but it was a callback to the developer Ben had emailed me. And his he- subject line was, an African team fat game dev at PAX East. Like, clearly a real fan, like, knew what it was. And so the idea with Semblance is that it is a platformer, but it's a, a world deformer. So you have the line, it's, you look like a simple gumdrop and you go through and they'll be like, you know, you need to get up to this block or whatever it is here, but the platform's here and you jump up there and you can't get up to that, pla- that, that actually the block you need to get to. So you go underneath, you jump up into the platform that's above you and you make like, so it'll like kind of like pump, exactly. pump it up so that you can it go bumps on your head it up. It makes on. a line and yeah, you can then he climb up there it, and do it. He described it as if the world was made of Play-Doh. Mm. And so when you if you you can kind of like whatever you do will form the that, yeah, different yeah. things that way You can tell he's demoed the game a few times. That's a really and, good way to promote. And also uh, he was talking about like the wall jumps where when you wall jump back and forth It's not like a normal platformer where it's just like bouncing off when you bounce you make little divots So you go in there you can kind of hang out for a second same and, thing and right? Yeah. It's over. Yeah. So, yeah, so yeah, it's it's taking what we already know mechanically and making it something different Which is actually super interesting, right? Uh, for that one, it's out in 2017 on PC and Mac is what they say, but I, that will definitely come over to some thing. A lot of these point. games that we play there right now, they're PC, but we're talking and they're all like, we want to get them on consoles. And, and I'm sure will everybody's doing it right now, right? Out of green light and all yeah. that. Uh, you got I, I saw one called Schnippers okay. S, or Snipers. Yeah, I guess Snipers would make more sense. I got snipper clips on the brain. You do. Um, it's a, it, They describe it as a bouncing bullets four player t- tower fall style game. Uh-huh. So it's four four players, all one screen. You're kind of jumping around and you're, you're shooting and it's like an angled shooter. So you, you have all your 
your different um, like the analogs of, of where to go. Sure. And when you shoot, your bullet starts bouncing, mm. and your bullet can kill you. So it, it turns okay. to like a bullet hell. Yeah, that you, of your players, own creation. Of your own creation with four other people. So gotcha. it, it looked kind of cool. And obviously, the stages have a bunch of different obstacles and things you can hide behind. And there was some weird gravity stuff they had going on where um, you can shoot the bullet and it would get caught in a thing and like go another way. Yeah. So that I thought that looked pretty cool. Um, it's still in active dev. It's PC only for now. Gotcha. But. The one I want to give a shout out to is Badass Hero. Mm. Now, here's what I'm going to say, and this is a tall order, but stick with me, you, the listener slash viewer. We've, it's come up a bunch with Colin and I on PSLW and on this show where we talk about how Rogue Legacy ruined roguelikes for us, right? Because every roguelike that comes out now you play, you're like, oh, great. And I hope it's like Rogue where I die and I, then I can take whatever my progress is in some respect and make myself stronger, right? And so many games don't do that and they fuck it up. And you're like, well, Enter the Gungeon's cool, but I feel like I'm not making any progress. Why yeah. do I want to keep playing it, right? This I'm going to read you a little bit of information here off the email because, uh, again, here, Martin, the dev on this one, badass here, hit me up. Uh, Badass Hero is a roguelike platform sh- a platformer shooter where you play inside a comic book, move from frame to frame, and turn enemies into ink to write your own story anew. The game features fast-paced hit-and-run gameplay, procedural generation of levels, and various items that make every playthrough different, all in extremely polished, modern, high-resolution 2D art. Uh, the, right now, it's still a ways out. Q1 2018, of course, these are indie devs, which probably means... Who knows? Who the fuck knows? Uh, Xbox One and PlayStation 4 versions uh, are included or whatever. So now I'm jumping back to my notes about it. I set it up. Comic books. Everything's awesome. It doesn't look as like... uh, No, I don't want to say good because that's not what I mean. But it doesn't look as intense or maybe as engaging as Rogue Legacy. But I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. Because Rogue Legacy was really fucking tough for a long time. And this one looks like I have guns and I'm in there and I'm shooting and I'm in it and I'm blood splattering all over me. I'm like, this yeah. looks really cool. And it's, you know, this uh, cartoony art as you run through and do it and you do all these different things. Um, the one I was watching was a World War II comic. There's different comics, different mm. settings. So there's World War II. There's an alien invasion. Oh, I'm sorry. Actually, I was in the Jungle Book. There's not the Jungle Book, but a Jungle comic. There's a World War II comic and an alien invasion one. Uh, yeah, you get you earn skill points through the ink that you're playing with. Right now, there's eight mini bosses through per book, three bo- big bosses per book. You go through, you play through this. Um, it was a cool, you know, Comic Zone is one of those games that everybody's like, ah, it should have been great, but it wasn't great. And like, da, da. Yeah. this is similar in the way of like the map is the comic book panels. And you kind of, you, when you see where you're going, as you do in any roguelike, where, right, where you can kind of see where you should be or where you've been, and, like those panels light up then, you see it in the same way, of, like knowing there's panels above you or over there and then making that choice to go to them to go fight things and get covered in blood and do all that stuff. It was definitely one that I was like, cool, this looks like a really fun game. I don't know if it's going to be great, but it looks like a game I would definitely want to play. Awesome. I, I had a couple more I want to talk about. There's one called Dimension Drive. Mm-hmm. It's uh, one of those vertical scrolling shoot 'em ups where you're in your little jet or whatever spaceship sure. going up the screen, right? And like like shooting things and kind of like a bullet storm, bullet hell type thing. Uh, but the screen is split in two and you have two ships going up at once, but it depends on what dimension you're in. So one's a parallel dimension to the other. A parallel so dimension. You're dimension, only dimension, actually dimension. like you can wherever your ship is, it is in the same place in both of them, but your ship only exists in one of the dimensions at any given time. Mm-hmm. So you just, you see where your ship would be in the other okay, dimension okay and it's a oh. it's kind of like a puzzle type game sure. where as you're going up there'll be obstacles that you have to like f- switch over to the other thing and get in the right position and switch and when i when i was playing it i was like this is cool good idea a little simple in execution within like five minutes of playing i was just like oh wow this is really they were just teaching me the mechanics that's of this. awesome like there's that's a awesome. lot going on here uh right now again only pc uh, but it looked it looked super awesome, and sure. I liked the the look of it. Very comic inspired and goofy story going on about the the dimensions. And I was like, this looks awesome. Hope it comes to consoles. Yeah. Uh, Duck Game is a game that I I, I think it's already out uh, on on PC uh, As fully. I know it's definitely is. it's already out in early access, but I think it's already co- totally out. I've seen a lot of let's plays, and it's another tower fall type game. You're a bunch ah. of little ducks running around shooting and stuff, and it looks funny as hell. Coming to the Switch, so I was like, all right, I want to I want to give it a shot. Mm-hmm. I can actually play it because I'm, I'm excited. On that level, that. I mean, Mr. Shifty was there. I can't say I can't sing the praises of Mr. Shifty enough. If you missed last week's games cast, uh, what remains of Edith Finch was there. Not that that's Switch related, but now I'm just talking about yep. games that I already know I'm sold on, so I don't mm-hmm. take the demo. Sonic Mania. Uh, there, uh, Edith Finch. I'm talking about trying to come through for a demo before games released 
Um, Perception was there, which is a game I backed on Kickstarter, which is that one you know where you don't can't see but you do see oh, kind of yeah. thing. It was I didn't get that set up in time to go play it, but I know I already know that I like that game. Last Pyre two for me, there. Yeah. Rain World, which is a game. We, oh, you we met? Saw yeah, on yeah, the yeah, yeah, show. yeah. It's uh, Adult Swim games and Adult Swim games, man. Shout out to them. They're, doing they're, they're stuff. really trying to like. Yeah. Like actually, let's get good games and not just license stuff. But then let's make and that's our what stuff good th as well. That's what you thought it was going to be at first. It was just going to be Adult Swim properties, right? And yeah. then it was. I think it was like last packs where they had a really big booth and a really big activation. They were showing a whole bunch of awesome shit. Like, oh fuck! But what's cool about them is they're. It seems like they're doing for indie games what Adult Swim does for anime or mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. for cartoons or for I mean any of their shows that they they've had. It has that. It has that same kind of feel that yeah. Adult Swim always has. Watching Rain World, it uh, it looks like a Panda Musk animation. Hell uh, yeah. With, with the, the pixel art and all that. And you're this, what do they call it? Slug cat? Um, yeah, you're a slug, slug cat. cat. And uh, it, it was, it's very interesting. They're calling it a survival platformer. Okay. Uh, so just like kind of, it's just a platformer in the sense that you're just, you know, hopping around and kind of getting through the levels. But then there'll be things chasing you down. So you do need to kind of like run away from stuff. And it does have like a survival horror vibe to it. Okay. But it's a 2D platformer. Um, so very up my alley. I liked that a lot. And then there was another game that I didn't play. I just saw it. It's called Katana Zero, okay. also from Adult Swim Games. Uh, they describe it as a fast paced neo noir action platformer focusing on tight, instant death, acrobatic combat, and a dark 80s neon aesthetic. So I'm like, all right, obviously I'm sold rad, on yeah. this. Um, so aided with your trusty katana, the time manip manipulation drug Kronos, and the rest of your assassin's arsenal, fight your way through a fractured city and take back what's rightfully yours. So I'm like, all right, I'm totally fucking in. The music sounds like Kavinsky, and I'm like, all right, this looks great. Sure. So that was it for me. Yeah, I w there was so much cool. The, pro the problem I put in quotes, there's just so much shit awesome awesome shit at pax east now and pax anything and the problem is i was i think we talked about it or maybe i was talking to somebody at, from rooster teeth about how it's just been interesting how our careers have evolved of when i remember going and doing game scoop panels right it was always the q a was always led off by what did you see you know what i mean and the, you, we would still do it and then it was but what was the coolest thing you saw and, you know, and people stopped asking us that a few years ago because we moved to this entertainer vibe where it is like this year we had the one panel and the prey activation, and that was like those were our responsibilities. Mm -hmm. And so to have time to walk the floor was great, but it was also that we're there to meet people, and like people kept stopping us, and that was awesome and a fantastic. I'm trying to stop that, but it was it, there was no there's no way to see everything anymore. Yep. Where I remember covering the first PAX East, and like I saw everything. <laughs> I put up articles about like here's all these awesome things you should see for IGN, and like to have it where it is now, where there's just so much awesome shit, so much everywhere. Awesome shit. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing. Very, very Great cool. time to be a gamer. Stay tuned to all of that stuff. Keep it locked to the Kind of Funny Games cast. Right. Never mind the fact I put on a sweatshirt. Don't worry about it. It's a thing. Whatever. Topic four, as always. But the thing is, I, you know, I was hot when we were doing the other topics. Brought to you by you. You can go to kindoffunny.com slash gamescast topic, just like all these people did, then I to leave your to questions, to comments, and concerns. And, it was cold. and we will we'll, we'll address Jen? them. No, I'd like to. Yeah, who is Jen? Thank you for asking. Jen's my girlfriend. I don't talk about her a lot. She makes a world of me. You're really good at fake crying. Yeah. Like in a well, way I'm really good like at real crying, of, too. As you are, seen. but that's the thing is it always, when you're real crying, yeah. there's times where I'm not sure if you're fake crying, and when oh, you're fake crying, I'm not sure if you're real crying. Gotcha. You just keep me fucking... You never know anymore. Off my knock. That's why they call me the viper, because vipers cry on cue, and that's how they trick people into coming over. Is this snake hurt? And then... Blah! Is this snake blah! hurt? <laughs> Holy shit. I looked around the room to see if we had one of the snake pass snakes in here that, you, that Kev could toss my way, and I was going to send Kev a telepathic link to toss me it, but he never did. But I didn't see the snake, so but that's why didn't I didn't do it. The link. I know I didn't do it. I didn't do it. So I before I, I, I got a question, bad. I got an audience question. Sure, snake pass. Yeah, is it the business? Yeah, it's cool, real cool. Um, we're gonna we have a let's play. Are we putting it up ever? Yeah, I don't know if you've noticed, Kevin. I have not. It's been a week, and so it's kind of like let's just let everything breathe. People want to be mean to us. Go ahead. We got it. We can take it. I don't feel like letting people be mean to our guests. And so I feel I feel bad of like, hey, Snake Pass is a great game. Here's a Let's Play. I'm mad about Colin. I'm like, well, I understand that. But can we talk? Oh, you just want to keep talking about that. Okay. Well, that's fine. I, again, as we've said a million times in the morning show. Feel your feelings. Everybody vent. Everybody feel your feelings. That's fine. But yeah, I'm not putting out. We have a, we have a ton of awesome Let's Plays from uh, uh, GDC that I want to put out. They're all timeless. So it doesn't matter. But yeah. 
Uh, Snake Pass, great. Okay. Snake Pass, really cool. I'm excited about it. It was fun watching you guys play at PAX East. Yeah, no, no. And they, the Let's Play is great too. And that was the thing we drank during it because that was even better. But that's the kind of game that it reminds me of. And that's in one of those, that's an interesting game of I think I'm going to play Snake Pass on the Switch because I can mm -hmm. play it anywhere. But mm -hmm. then once I know it, go play it on the PlayStation to get my platinum. You know Ooh. what I mean? Because I don't have all the, I'll be an expert. I have all the things about it. But it's a, you know, it's, um, it's, one of the easy ones you always say, right? Easy to pick up, difficult to master. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? It's cool to actually have that momentum of being a snake and how do we work? Yeah, yeah, you like that? I do. Uh, if memory serves, Seb is coming through next week and his story is super fascinating because he works over at Sumo, Sumo Digital. Mm -hmm. They made Little Be Big Planet 3. Mm. Seb and Dino, who's in the last play, you'll eventually see. Both of them got hired at Sumo because they were such so great at creating Little Big Planet levels. So we're going to have Seb come in for a topic to talk about, sure, how he made Snake Pass, but more importantly, how Start he went from, from being bottom. a... Now he's here. Exactly. How he's he went from just being a his way up. All right. You know what? Get it all out of your system now. If you embarrass me in front of this man, mm. he was a teacher before this. Was he? Mm -hmm. mm. And then he switched it up. Nice. That, see, that was a good one. <laughs> First question comes from Joshua Steele. He says, where does Pokemon need to go as a franchise? Move on from mobile and focus on Switch? Well, here's the thing. When you say mobile, I'm assuming you Pokemon just mean, Go. I think you think it means DS. Games. I think it means DS. Okay, okay. So it's like I. You, this is a tough question to answer. Sure. I think that Pokemon needs to keep going on actual mobile. The Pokemon Go, obviously, that's a success. If they can find a way to get a Pokemon game in the style um, of Super Mario Run or uh, Fire Emblem Heroes, where it's like, all right, we're going to take this franchise and mobilize it in a way that is of a Nintendo quality, um, but it's dumbed down sure. for, for mobile controls. Cool. That'll be great. Grow the franchise that way. That's awesome. In terms of what to do next with the franchise, for years people have talked about, I want the MMO yep. and whatever. And it's like, yeah, and that could be really cool. I don't think Nintendo would do it, and I don't think they would do it right. Right. Um, so that that is When you think online infrastructure, you don't think of Nintendo. Exactly some type of persistent world where you can play it offline and it does have a lot of stuff. And then it's a, you keep adding on expansions kind of like GTA mm -hmm. five online yeah, does. Yeah. I think that could work in a, in a really cool way, but I think right now, but even that, do you think that's a possibility that they'd ever do? I don't know. I mean, here's, here's my thing as an outsider from yeah. Pokemon, right? Uh, Cause I played uh what was it? Soul silver well, yeah, on the DS Soul one silver. with the pet pedometer. We all had at IGN. I played that for a little bit. Didn't the beat best. it. It was fun. Yeah. And uh, I played Pokemon Go. Mm -hmm. The thing I see from as an outsider looking at the Pokemon franchise and their handheld versions is that Pokemon is comfort food. Pokemon is, I mean, you want to give EA shit for Madden. You want to give Activision shit for Call of Duty. Pokemon is even, is even more an affront to what you accuse them of. Pokemon is, cool, now they're tropical. Pokemon, you know what I mean? You're still just running around catching them and it's just, we changed a little bit, but that's what it is. It doesn't seem like there are, there's, I don't, and I'm just, again, casual fan yeah. or casual observer. The, there's not these giant leaps. Mm -hmm. And so for them to go and be like, here's this cash cow, this thing that makes a million dollars all the time. This thing that I think speaks to my point of what Nintendo is good at of we make toys. They make a toy. It's Pokemon. You know what it is. You're going to be excited for it. You're not going to be excited for it. Why would they fuck with that and invest millions of dollars into making an MMO, into making mm -hmm. a persistent world, into making anything outside of what's the proven track seller that people want and continue to buy? Yeah. I mean, you bring up a lot of interesting points. I think that when you look at Pokemon as a franchise overall, the it it's different from what you're saying about the EA's type of stuff because it's not annualized. Sure. Like it, there is years between each one and yeah, the, the formula is always the same and that's the problem that even I have with it, but I feel like that's, and again, I am a huge Pokemon fan. Having said that, I am not a hardcore Pokemon fan. I couldn't tell you all the differences you between with, with all the, different, the latest gens and all that. But when it comes down to it, like I had a really good time with sun and moon because it was way different than what I expected mm -hmm. in terms of story progression. And there wasn't gyms and they did a lot of stuff where it, it wasn't what I expected, which was the more kind of EA style where it's like, hey, it's just it with different monsters. We reskin and it's, stuff. It's, yeah, mm -hmm. like, uh, ironically to me, the, oh, it's the Aloha version. It was the first time where I was like, oh, no, the, the Aloha shit is actually just the location's different, but the, the entire thrust of the game is different because of that. Okay. You're still catching Pokemon sure, and sure, sure. whatever. Having said that, I still want more. 
Um, but you're right. Like these games, every time they come out, they sell millions and millions of copies each when you combine them both because they are essentially the same game uh, that they're going to track on the NPD forever, yeah. you know, for the, the entire console's life cycle. So we're in a weird place now because traditionally with Pokemon, it's you get the, the two versions and then within two years, you get the third version. A couple times we've seen little change ups with that where uh, like with black and white, there was black and white two instead of gray yeah. or whatever and it's probably because gray is a shitty color whoa um whoa but then then we also see the remakes that have started we got the remakes of red and blue then we got the remakes of gold and silver then we got the remakes of ruby and sapphire sure. what a place now it's like what are they gonna do next are i mean i would really love to see them back? blow the top off and me do too. something different but so, i just don't know if that's what they're actually thinking about doing because for me it's the same thing of if they're selling the way they're it, this is the ubisoft thing of like we're gonna keep making Assassin's Creed every year until you stop buying them, and then they saw the dips and they're like, all right, we're gonna take our time, we're gonna take our foot off the gas. And it's the same way as I sit here and I'm always like, man, why doesn't t- 2K take the WWE game and build, blow it up and do it from the ground? And because they sell fine, they have this is their projected number, and they must be cl- hitting it or clearing it every year. So what does it matter? And and I think the other thing too is these, the Pokemon games are still great. Like it's not like there there's been I mean there's been some that aren't as good as the others. Too much water, but, but they're they're well. That one's that was great. It's a remake of I'm Ruby and Sapphire. Right, yeah. 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 Uh, but the thing is, with them now, we're in a weird place where, all right, are we really going to get a remake of Diamond and Pearl? Those are games that came out on the DS. I don't know that we need that necessarily. Yeah. Um, like Ruby and Sapphire, at least those were Game Boy Advance games. So we're starting to get to a point where it's like, all right, cool. Is this even necessary? Then on the other side of it, of the third game, it's like, okay, we got Sun and Moon last November. These are new games still. So... The rumors of Pokemon Stars, very interesting to me. What happens with that? Does it go on 3DS and Switch, or is it a Switch exclusive? I don't even know. It's a, a, we're we're in a, we're kind of stuck in between gens, both with the 3DS as a system and with Pokemon as a franchise. Where Pokemon Stars is going to be huge for the Switch. I can imagine that they're going to put it out, and it's going to uh, be on both consoles. If I had to bet. Because why wouldn't they put it on the 3DS as well and sell millions of copies, right? But I think this would be the last time we see that happen. Then the next Pokemon game, which will probably take a couple years to to come out, probably I would guess within the next two years would be announced. I don't know what that's going to be. Is it going to be, all right, this is switched from the ground up? Or is it going to be, here's another 3DS game. Yeah, yeah. Or a game that can be on both. Or can both kind of live together? Can there be two Pokemon franchises in the same way that there's 2D and 3D Mario games? Mm-hmm. Will we see mm-hmm. a world where there still is the smaller Pokemon adventure that we think of as the handheld games where you go through the eight gyms and the Elite Four, and that still exists, but then the Switch does try something different, makes it a bit more of an uh, RPG, like a console RPG, what sure. you think of, sure. um, and give it the Breath of the Wild treatment in the sense of we're going to blow up this franchise and, and try something different with it, even though people love Zelda. Mm-hmm. You know, and I can see them kind of doing both. And I, I fully expect that they're going to release smaller Zelda games that are not Breath of the Wild that are more similar to Link Between Spirit Worlds. Spirit Tracks and stuff like that. Um, yeah. Where it's like even more like 2D style things. And sure. I think that the Switch is uniquely uh, positioned to be able to hopefully, once the 3DS is done, have both of those experiences and have them both be seen at the same level where it's not, oh, this is better than that. It's just, oh shit, these are both good. Okay. So I don't know. Pokemon has a lot to do to to prove it to, to me that it can do the thing that we all want it to, yeah. which is a proper console RPG. Like I think the MMO is being a little too wishful thinking. I think a proper RPG they're capable of. And we're just getting closer and closer. Even Sun and Moon, it's like, all right, they're 3D. Yeah. Like, they just they they feel a bit like PlayStation 3D games, but PS1. I, know, I, I understood what you meant. Um, but the, we got Pokemon Coliseum and Pokemon XD on the GameCube, and those were RPGs. They just weren't what we wanted because it wasn't just copy and paste of here's the gym battles and all this stuff. So they're in a, in a they're in a bad place from a I got an opinion standpoint. They're in a great place from sales and the people that play the game standpoint. Here's so. a question for you. This is switching tracks kind of, but it's similar of Nintendo franchise and what's going to happen now mm-hmm. that the Switch is here. You, we all, I mean, I know every calls for it all the time. You assume there's a Metroid game in development that's coming, that's co- coming for the Switch, and it's going to be what everybody wants and da-da-da. When you say that, and when you think about a Metroid game coming to the Switch, what perspective are you thinking it's going to be? Do you think, because I, 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 I think a Metroid Prime would look awesome on this. Well, so that's, I mean, that, again, you're bringing up another point where it's like, they're, we're at, Nintendo franchises have been around for so long and have seen so many different kind of 
evolutions and, yeah. and, and then like just reformat periods where different things exist and Metroid has never sold well traditionally. Sure. So it's like it sells good, but like not astronomical. Sure. That's why they it's have, not pushing, haven't you made know, bearing the needle and all that stuff. Uh, I, I honestly think the easy answer is Metroid Prime. I, yeah. I, I think that the, that is what people want, even though people want a 2D Metroid game. Like sure. I, I want a, a fusion sequel, a Super Metroid style game. Like that, Give it to some developer that really cares about Way making forward. that shit look good. I mean, yeah, yeah, exactly. But like some, something like that, where it's, I mean, even retro, honestly, like people would fucking go just ballistic. If Retro came out, I was like, we're making Metroid, but it's 2D. Yeah, but yeah. they did such a good job with Donkey Kong Country Returns and especially Tropical Freeze that I'm like, I trust them yeah. to do a 2D yeah. Metroid. They obviously know Metroid. They did Prime. I worry that if Prime doesn't have something extra, I don't know that I need a Prime 4. We got Prime 2, which was sure. which was great. But it's not Prime. Prime is amazing. Prime is a masterpiece. Prime 2 was great. Prime 3 was like, all right, it's just more. Here's an embarrassing question from the Sega kid who now <laughs> has no lineage to this. Are all the Metroid games in the same timeline? Like, yeah. I, don't get me wrong. I know Metroid, yeah. Super Metroid, Prime, and then uh, Other M. Like, that's where it gets. I mean, yeah. I know Other M was because it had the creepy trailer of like, nope. I saw the baby Metroid and yeah. it loved me. They're, no, they're all they're okay. all in the same thing. I mean, they're just like the weird spin-off. I'm stuff. sure that yeah, yeah like, exactly. I, I don't know about Metroid Prime Hunters and Federation. Sure, Force sure, sure, and all sure, that. sure. I, I'm sure that somehow they're related. But in terms of the, the canon, yeah, like no, okay. there's direct Samus has with, okay, great, with sure. all of them. Um, so I, I feel like they could blow it up, but they wouldn't. There's not really a need. Like the, it's not like the canon is that important. Sure. In yeah. Metroid, and it's more about the experience that you have. But turn into a little ball. I don't know a, a Metroid that that functions more like uh, I I I, I want to stop just always being like do what Breath of the Wild did because yeah, it's yeah. like that's just getting expectations high. But I mean, it, these franchises kind of need it. Like Nintendo has been doing the same thing for so long. With, with do you think we'll franchises. see that? Because I think that's that's the thing. Zelda is a lot like Mario, where oh great another Mario game. No one ever really says that, but oh great another Mario game. But Mario games are distinctly different as you go you yeah. know what i mean 64 is not super mario world is not sunshine is not 3D galaxy world. exactly and so even zelda where it's like with the exception of majora's mask right uh it's not you know ocarina of time is not and the story is and the ideas but the gameplay and the mechanics and i'm a dog now and now i'm fucking i would i would argue though that, wind waker that the mario games are more diverse than the zelda games i don't are. think that's an argument i agree with you a thousand percent from from uh i think that you can kind of really lump mario into now very distinct categories which is 2d games 3d uh 3d uh, open world games mm -hmm. which include mm -hmm. 64 sunshine um then the 3D, 3D platformer course okay. platformer games yeah. that are like Crash Bandicoot, so the 3D World, 3D mm -hmm. Land, and Mario Galaxy One and Two um, are somewhere in between those two things because a lot of the levels are pretty big and open, but at the end of the day, it's they're still bite-sized, small, linear things, so they're they're similar to 3D World. With Zelda, visually, Wind Waker looks very different than Ocarina, sure, but from a gameplay perspective and from a, a design standpoint. They're very similar games. You're right. I Even forgot. All, and, and, our, and I forgot that in Ocarina, I was on the boat all the time. Mike drops you later. Can't you're right. You're, you're you're fucking right. No, uh, but no, but Zelda has a, the the kind of the trope of usually there's two different worlds, whether it's different times or like mm, dark world, light mm, world, mm. or this or that. Okay. Or, you know. So, um, and then Twilight Princess and Skyward Sword, I think, also fall into that. Where it gets interesting is then there's the 2D Zelda games, like the top-down Zelda games. Um, and even those kind of have their... Then there's the touch side with Phantom Hourglass and Spirit Tracks. But uh, I think that Link Between Worlds did to 2D Zelda games what Breath of the Wild did for the 3D Zelda games to a lesser extent. But being able to kind of buy your weapons whenever you want and it opens up the world, you can kind of tackle it how you want to from a top-down perspective. Mm -hmm. I think that that could be really interesting for a Metroid game as well. Um, kind of just drop that bomb where it's like, what if you're you're playing Metroid and it's not the you start off with all your powers, then you immediately lose them all, then you need to go back and gain them all back. It's like, no, what if you had them? You were just Samus and, from the get go. Yeah, and yeah. it's like, but and it's something similar to Breath of the Wild, where sure. it's like all sure. you have all the tools. It's just a matter of figuring out how to use them together. But again, I kind of want to see that in a two D world more than a three D world. But I, I'll be fucking stoked if I get a Metroid Prime. Yeah. But, I want a 2D Metro game even more. 
Cool. Yeah. Can I tell you how excited I am for the Switch? Like, as we talk about all this shit, and it's just even the thing of, and this is, again, just me being, you know, a biased asshole. If they were just to, and I know that this happened, but I mean, put all the primes together again and put them out on the Switch. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And, like, make it through eShop if that's actually one of the things they're pushing for and do all that crap. Because, like, I didn't want to play it on Wii U, and also there's too many games on Wii, but now that this thing is with me all the time, I'd love to play that stuff. Because yep. I remember, man... When Metroid Prime dropped, I remember sitting in the living room in college and watching Kyle Hayes, my roommate, my, one of my best friends in the whole world, play through it nonstop. You know yeah. what I mean? Oh, Metroid fucking Prime. Metroid Prime's one of those games. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. where, and that's why, like, Prime 2, it was good. And then 3 was a bit more action Like, that's usually the the way that these sure. things go. But, man, Prime was such a special game. Um, we made it through one question. I apologize. We did make it. That, that's fine. That's totally I fine. I guess two, actually. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wrap it on just one more. Okay. Uh, this one, I want, I want your We're having thoughts good conversations. On yeah. Joe Frantic. Joe Frantic. What do you guys think about Ryan being $10 more on the Switch than its competitors? Will this start a trend? And it's also coming out later on the Switch. I think that's some bullshit. It is. Yeah. I wonder why. Yeah. Dude, yeah. Is there, I haven't heard any. Did, nobody got a quote on this? Let me, Not let, me, let me Google it around. Beep, boop, beep, boop. Beep, boop, 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 boop. But no, I mean, Ryan, first off, looks great. Uh-huh. I was really surprised because, of course, Ryan was that game. Oh, Tequila Works. It's going to be a PlayStation exclusive. Then PlayStation apparently came in one day and was like, took the dev kits like this game sucks. <laughs> and then <laughs> I saw it a day of the devs and I was like, oh, OK, cool. And then I checked in at PAX East. I ran over to Surprise Apology, who was playing it. And uh, I was like, what do you think of it? He's like, oh, it's good. It's a little floaty here or there. But like, this is enjoyable so far. And it, it looks like a weird eco meets witness meets mm. a bit of sh- you know if it's already eco it already feels like uh, uh well, last sure. guardian but yeah, you know what yeah. i mean of like uh you're in that same vein of like exploring this beautiful colorful world or whatever so hold on mm. rhyme you feel fill time talk rhyme about switch why well, i'm switch but yeah i'm loving my switch too right. it's been it's been fantastic yeah get a switch man you should buy buy tim's what do you mean by tim's there's another one is there mm-hmm. where it's in my house right now. I keep forgetting to bring it. Huh. Mm. Huh. Oh, cartridge is what people are complaining about? There's no way. Well, this is from BGR, which oh, I've never no, heard of. Oh, no, it's that offense. problem again. The expensive oh, cartridges. Geez. No, but it's, these are carts. These are cheap. Yeah, it's, here it's we go. not a problem. A, Forbes. The cost of Nintendo Switch cartridges could hurt third-party support. This is by Paul Tassie. This week, Eurogamer has published an interesting piece about why a few games are flat out more expensive on the Switch than they are elsewhere. They look at the they look at a pair of indie games, Rhyme and Puyo Puyo Tetris, which cost ten pounds more, or maybe that's no that's pounds more than the same versions of the game on other platforms. What they found is the cost of manufacturing Switch cartridges increased the cost for these developers, particularly indie games with a smaller run, mm. and that they can't make their digital versions cheaper because Nintendo demands price parity between its physical and digital media in a bid not to upset brick-and-mortar mom and grop shops. I added the mom and grop. So even with no increase in production cost for digital, even with no increase in production cost for digital, both versions of Rhyme cost 40 bucks on the Switch, or 40 pounds, as opposed to 30 pounds elsewhere. Huh. Something about that seems off and weird to me. That does, I mean, sucks. But yeah. you figure that it, it makes sense, right? It does. Because you figure, let's talk about means of production, right? That it's like, it's so many people have the ability to make a disc, so it's cheaper. There's this, there's different places to go to, depending on who, actually who you work with, different places to go to and do it. Whereas with cartridges, there must be few people manufacturing these things. Yeah, and it, I mean, this seems like something that would affect indie games the that most, are trying yeah. to go physical yeah. the most. But it's just like, well, at that point, don't go physical then. Do they have a choice or is that not a choice? Is Nintendo's, is Nintendo's policy everything's everywhere? Or is no, it, you, okay. definitely not. Just, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. I don't no, no, know. No, no, Sorry. No. So that's like, all right, well, then don't go physical. That, yeah. eh, something about this, I, I'm like, that doesn't sound right. Like, well, the thing about it, like though, Bomberman too. Bomberman R. It's like, okay, then you shouldn't have went physical if it was going to bump the price up that much. Mm, yeah, I hear you. But the qu- the thing would be that with this, I don't know. Let me check into who. Do you know who's publishing, Ron? We know no. who's developing it. I mean, obviously, Tequila Works. Ron... Video game. I said video game, but Google will fix it. Don't worry and about they it. They know what's up. Wikipedia. Like, try and it's like no. I mean, rhyme. rhyme. Publishers gray boot and six foot or gray box and six foot, which I've never heard of. It's. I think it comes down to what the publishers then need to do in terms of like, if you're a publisher and you've negotiated to get spots on GameStop shelves. You already have X number of slots. Why not give it to this platform and an up and coming thing, right? I, so yeah. I don't think it's as easy as that in terms of, and not to mention that games do still sell well on shelves when people. Yeah, see well, them exactly, and especially now on the Switch, where it's like the answer that of why Bomberman was there is because people wanted something else to buy that wasn't just Zelda, mm-hmm. so they had that. Yeah, 
But I don't know. I, I think that this is not going to be a problem in the for future. Long. For yeah. long. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I think that once once uh, more switches get into people's houses and the the devs don't need to worry so much about this, like this isn't going to affect AAA games. Like they're not going to cost more or even sure. A games. Yeah. Even, yeah. Like I don't think it's going to affect third parties. I think it's going to affect indies. Yeah. So and most indies are seen as downloadable titles anyway. Well, and that's the whole thing is like if you're truly and I'm not insulting anybody, if you're truly an indie, you might not be working with a publisher. You're doing it all on your own. So yeah, you are digital only. So you don't have to worry about this. This is where like limited run games comes in for Vita stuff. Or PlayStation yes, stuff. exactly. I and imagine that will start happening a lot with the Switch as well. Sure. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been the Kind of Funny Games cast. Until next time, I love you. Come watch me play Mass Effect this week. Mo every Monday. <sighs> Why do I keep saying every weekday? 9 a.m. We say every Monday, and that's wrong. It's every weekday, yeah. It's 9 a.m. Till, till you know the morning why, show starts. You know why I'm fucking it up? Switch. Is uh, the alliteration. I was thinking Mass Effect Mondays, but mm. you were saying Mass Effect mornings. Mass Effect mornings. That got in my head. I was thinking the M's. Mm. <sighs> Man, I tell you what. Clown shoes around here. Hope you enjoyed that video. If you like games content, make sure you click here to subscribe to Kind of Funny Games. And you like movies and comic books and food and other lifestyle stuff, you should click right here. Subscribe to Kind of Funny, our other channel. It's fantastic. And if you want to give us money, click here or here.